Welcome to Arcade Attack. <laughs> A retro gaming podcast for up to four players. Sonic Boom! Singing Sonky! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, whatever. Wherever you are in the world listening to us, it's another Arcade Attack podcast. For you, for your listening pleasure. Free of charge, man. Indeed. Man. You're free. Free, yeah, free, free. And you'll notice that I'm joined by at least one person. Well, the usual rabble, of course it is. And um, joining me, only what can be described as the tastiest biscuit selection pack. If, in fact, <laughs> if in fact most of them had been eaten. Oh. I have... <laughs> it's stale now. I've, I've got the dashing Dylan. I'm the bourbon. I'm You're the group. bourbon. I've got the amazing Adrian. What biscuit Custard are you? Cream, I guess. Custard, Custard cream. cream, classic. Yeah. And the captivating Keith. Oh wow! What biscuit are you, sir? Um, I'd have to be a hobnob. <laughs> yes, they're like marines. I just thought he's more of a jammy dodger. And but, yeah. Jammy. <laughs> I've been called that before. Yeah. Hobnobs just drink all your tea. That's, that's what Peter yep. K says. Well, it? I do that. It's as well. true. So more bigging up than you deserve. But anyway, let's move on, shall we? How are we, chaps? How are we doing? Very good. Ooh. Yeah, we good. Still revved up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Fresh and full After of sugar. The day's festivi- yeah. Full of sugar. Full of sugar, a lot of sugar. Thanks to Lidl's knockoff Harry Bowl. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. So, we've got to move on to the task of working out what uh, today's podcast is all about. And as per my usual MO, I've got some really cringeworthy punnery to throw at you. See if you can guess what it is before I tell you. <laughs> uh, you might like today's pod, but don't shoot me down if you don't. Uh... I'm sure we can all look at it from a first-person perspective Ah. and still have enough ammunition in the can to get to the end. Ah. (laughs) You've guessed it. Have you guessed it? What's today's pod all about? RPGs. (laughs) RPGs. Puzzle games. More like BFGs. Ooh, good one. Oh, deal's on it, mate. I didn't even pr- I didn't even prepare that. No. I was just off the cuff. This is good, isn't it? Yeah. This is good. I mean, I don't blame anybody if they haven't guessed it because the punnery was awful. Um, but we're going to have a look at first-person shooters, FPS, mm. through the ages, gentlemen, through the ages. So we're going to look at it from, from the start, from the very seedlings yeah. of where it came from. Um, and we're going to go right up to today. Now, for those that are up to date with our pods, um, uh, firstly, they're all amazing, the listeners. Yeah. Um, recently managed to bag top spot in Croatia. Whoop, whoop. That's true, though. They love us over there. When we had when we had second place the week before, so oh. yes, <laughs> get in. Um, and you'll know that we've covered um, the the guys that are up to date. You'll know that we've covered legacy of both multiplayer and RTS games as well, which I had really great fun doing. And we had some really good discussion online after that about some of the the titles and oh, loads of stuff. You know, LAN parties and oh, just some of the hardware we were trying to run it on that couldn't run it and oh those were the days i'll tell you <clears throat> and also um you know the impact they had on the gaming scene some of the influential titles as well some of the big names and some of the smaller names as well maybe that we played that kind of didn't take off but we enjoyed so today's podcast is really no different apart from the fact that i'll be covering probably i would say the most played and widely released game type in gaming history, I would say. I would yeah, say maybe it's, that's it's a fair shout. It's yeah. FPS is is everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a it's a rinsed genre, shall we say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but um I mean what any other genres maybe could take that crown? You know, is there anything rinsed, that's as far as reaching much as an FPS? I, I was thinking maybe open world RPGs. Open world RPGs. MMRP RPG. Yeah. But I would, I would, that would have been my knee jerk. Would have been yeah, RPGs, well, sports, sports games. If you, you know, I suppose sports games. That, you know, mm. yeah, I suppose sports. You could even argue maybe even bigger, potentially. Yeah, because they're just non-stop, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Every, Every year, you know, year. you're going to get the usual Madden's, Fifas, and <laughs> what have you, NHLs, and all that sort of thing. So the other part of those um, past legacy uh, pods um, involved a bit of a step back. Obviously, way back in time, because we have to see where it starts. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get um, all of the stuff you get now from thin air. 
Nope. Obviously, well, it develops yeah. from, from a bedrock. So, um, we have to go back to sort of the earliest days of the genre. So, Dill, I'll ask you a favour. Would yeah, you okay. kindly fire up the old time machine you got it. And, <laughs> and send us back whoosh, go, whooshing it's, sounds? It's, it's, there's a part missing. because go, Shake the table. Shake Bang! <laughs> you know when your hoover's about to blow up? <laughs> 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 just imagine if someone tunes in at that moment they press have some it. of it <laughs> I'll just skip the intro <laughs> bang, bang, bang. my hoover's broke it right. sounds like you know um, Chewie's up to no good isn't he? <laughs> yeah, Chewbacca yeah. <laughs> dear oh dear mate. we've flown well, back to what year have we gone though well, wow well whilst we're in the time machine waiting for us to, to go for our warp tunnel I need to do my, my, my little disclaimer so as usual there's going to be games or people that maybe I don't mention or maybe don't give enough of the spotlight Ugh, to because there's James. there's always there's always somebody that says Why you didn't, didn't talk you about this, this enough or you didn't t- this was better than Doom <laughs> two is better than Doom three. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's the case and you get the hump, fight me or just moan at me on the socials and we can have a chat. <laughs> there, yeah. Um, so do but yeah, honestly though, if Doom two anything, is actually better than Doom three, I'll we'll, just add that in. Sorry, we'll come to that. We'll we come, we'll, don't worry, you'll have your soapbox. Thanks. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, honestly, if there's any gripes or humps or big ups or anything like that you want to do for any of the titles mm. or any of the people, anything at all, just shout us up. Mm. Yeah, send put posters, tag us in on a on a post, mm. and and we'll have a chat and we'll uh, we'll we'll kind of mull it over. Now, with the thread of the pod being, of course, FPS games, you would think that our time machine would be taking us back to the early '90s, right? Correct. Wrong. Uh, Wrong again. <laughs> So where do we need to go back to, I hear you ask? We are going back to good old 1973. That's what? We are indeed. And I do this, we get this every time. And and it surprises me when I research it, and it surprises you when I say it, and you think, hang about. There is no way there was an FPS in 1973. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. So there's no easy way to put this, chaps. 1973 was 50 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 73 yeah mm-hmm. yeah let's mm-hmm. yeah let's yeah let's move on yep. um it was the year when the exorcist debuted on the big screen and uh shall we say made more than a few waves at mm-hmm. cinemas mm-hmm. yeah scared the absolute pants off most people and i think mm-hmm. if i remember correctly seeing reaction there's actually reaction videos and stuff mm-hmm. like there's there's footage of you know grainy footage of people just leaving the cinema because yeah they didn't want it uh kojak was popular on tv Nice. Yeah. yeah, tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree was a big song, massive hit, and I didn't know this. The very first cellular mobile phone call was placed. Nice. Nineteen seventy three. Years ago. Yeah, we all assume it's the eighties because yeah. of the big yeah, blocky yeah. phones. No, nope. in fact, the first call was seventy three, which I think is quite impressive, actually. Um, funnily enough, it was also the year the very first the very first first person shooter a game came into existence. Now. For some AA points and a handful of little style Haribo, which are available anyway, so you can just take some. <laughs> Not really a prize. Does anybody know or hazard a guess at the name of the first documented FPS game? Oh, uh, you know what? I think I'm have looked. Adrian's waving his hand, so I'll come to him last because I think he knows. Yeah, it's ringing a bell. I don't think you did much. Like obviously, you went through corridors and stuff and didn't do much. But what? <sighs> you're 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 on the right lines. Yes. Yeah. What what what, what is it, Adrian? Age? Well, I did interview someone that pe- some people argued made the first FPS game. A certain Ed Rotberg who made Battlezone. No. Wrong. <laughs> that was, no, it, it was something. Sorry, he did that make Battlezone. Battle yeah. Tank one, isn't it? But in fact, and I will come to Battlezone because it it deserves its place in obviously the the Hall of Fame of, of FSP, FPS games and gaming in general. So that has its own its own yes. little section. Mm. It was actually developed um, by two guys called Greg Thompson and Steve Colley, and they were students who were doing a NASA work-study program. So they were actually studying, and at the same time of, of studying, they had to do um, you know, coursework and, and work, et cetera, and work mm-hmm. on systems. And this was one of their pieces of work. So what they wanted to do, they wanted to visualize fluid dynamics for spacecraft, mm. i.e. moving images mm. and, and things like that on the computer. So if you haven't seen this running, it's actually called Maze War. Maze War. Ring a bell? Yes. Rang a bell for me, and I was like, okay, I don't know whether I've seen it or not. I looked up the footage. I have seen it. Mm. Um, 
And I mean, if you haven't seen it running, just think straight green lines. You're just basically going through a corridor maze, aren't you? Correct. Forming, you know, basic walls and blocks, which move closer as you walk, yeah, um, around the maze, as you would expect. Very basic, um, but has kind of a cool feel to it, knowing that it's like the original. And um, when you watch it, it's very, um, it's, it's, it, it's quite. I don't know. It's different to kind of any other old game footage that you see because it's so damn basic. Mm-hmm. It's quite, it's, it's quite cool the way it looks. But there was a design later on that actually included a two player version, um, where you had to shoot your opponent to win. Oh, nice. So the movement essentially of the, of the, what we know as the FPS games uh, of, you know, modern FPS games, the movement of going forward, turning corridors, looking around, etc., was born with Maze War. And then the development slightly later to include shooting your opponent uh, to win again, horrendously basic, but it gave them the idea of the, of, of the fluidity of movement, you see, which is exactly what they wanted. Um, it was also further expanded later could actually run eight players and it had AI bots, customizable nice. maps, Online scoreboards and a spectator mode as well. That's pretty impressive. Wow. That really Which, cool. when you again, we're still in the seventies here. Mm. We're still in the mid seventies. That's a hell of an achievement, mm-hmm. you know, um, because all of those things there you take for granted on a modern mm. kind of multiplayer game, an FPS game, but not not for a game in the seventies mm-hmm. when you think about it. So another very very early, and this was the year after another FPS iteration was called Spasim, S P A S I M. Um, it used the same basis of movement, but it presented more as kind of a basic space flight simulator. Mm. Oh, so you had to space sim, spasim, space sim, space sim, spasim, space sim. Yeah, whichever. Yeah, I didn't think of it like that. that's really cool. Actually, <laughs> I think you're saying spasm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've read it as spasm. Yeah, space sim, space sim. Spa- <laughs> Keith, Keith gets the points on the back, and there's a handful of Harry Potter. Excellent. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this was if, again. If you look at the footage, it's very different because you're you essentially like flying into shapes and like docking ports and stuff. Mm. Um, again, I can imagine it was very helpful for like the space program and yeah, yeah. and and flight and things like that because it actually visualised you could you could you know model flying into certain areas and docking up mm. and all this sort of stuff. Um, so very clever. Um, both of the games used a kind of tile to tile movement engine. And that allowed players to move um, a space or, or a tile at a time, essentially, although it looked a bit more fluid than that because of the way they kind of engineered it. And you could only turn 90 degrees at any one time. So left, right, and that was it, basically. <sighs> so you, you had no free movement. Um, so for anyone thinking that this is kind of anything like approaching a modern FPS, it really is not. It was it was the, the very early, early bare bones of, yeah? Um, but the important thing to remember is that the ground, you know, this groundbreaking coding sort of opened the door um, to what would become one of, if not the biggest uh, genres. And, and at the time, obviously, nobody knew that. Um, so, so, yeah. I mean, if you think about what was around in the mid to late 70s arcade-wise... Space Invaders, mm. Pac Man, like yeah. Centipede, thing like that. Exactly, like that. yeah. Atari Classics, those those types of games, um, and they were all you know platform or you know single mm. screen games. Or um, th- there was nothing that was a first person no. viewpoint. So this was very very different. So where do we go from the first kind of seedlings of the genre? When was when was the you know the first title to really grab the headlines? Because Maze War and, and Space, Space Sim. Space Sim, Space Sim. They weren't really for the public. I'm getting, the, I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> well, no, not really. This is the thing. They were, you know, they're, they're little known kind of experiments, really. Um, mm. And they, you know, they they had a, a very limited kind of release, if you can call it a release at all. Um, and it was only really meant for kind of educational purposes and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But a lot of people document it as, you know, the the seedling of mm. FPS. So. After those two, we saw a few more titles which came out of the woodwork um, with the basic concepts. There was something called, a- I can't even pronounce this, Akalabeth, World of Doom. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, yeah. Akalabeth. Doom. There's, there's a Pretty trigger cool. word. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and a game called Way Out. And they actually use ray casting, which was similar to ray tracing, which uses light to display visual angles and shapes. Nice. Um, which, as you can imagine, brought a, a bit of a new dimension to to the visuals. Yeah, they also allowed players to free move around the the maps they were on. So we're we're talking some big strides forward. It wasn't, in fact, until a whole seven years though after Maze War um, that we fo- that we saw the first commercially successful uh, arcade based uh, first person shooter with the amazing. 
Battle Zone. Yes, yes. in 1980. That name again? Battle <laughs> Zone. One more time for a dramatic effect. <laughs> Battle Zone. <laughs> it was indeed Battle Zone. Um, and now, Age, I know you've had the, the absolute pleasure of interviewing um, the creator, the father of Battle Zone, uh, Mr. Ed Rockberg, in a previous podcast. Well worth checking out, by the way. Um, yeah. Because if you think, again, if you, if you, if you enjoy video game history in terms of where it came from, where it started, and actually how people back then, how engineers and devs used to be able to create stuff from like nothing using the technology. Um, it's a really, really good um, interview. Thank but you. he shares kind of a lot of the creative process um, and the opportunities around it, etc. But I mean, just give us a flavor of like, you know, his thoughts around essentially, you know, did he know he was creating the... You know, one of the when, absolute classics. When I interviewed him, he said, little disclaimer, if I have to end the podcast early, it's because my, my house might be burning down. He was, uh, there was a forest fires in California a couple of years oh, ago. Yeah. And uh-huh. I think he oh, God, yeah. spoke about this on the interview. So I'm really sorry. If you see smoke on my screen, it's, <laughs> it's good for I gotta go. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> um, he was really good, actually, really humble. And he, he was very proud of obviously working on Battlezone. I think it led to, a lot of opportunities, actually. So eventually, he worked. Uh, he, he he was linked to Polybius, wasn't he? As well, I don't want to go off um, beaten track. I, I, yeah, because he actually yeah. worked on a sort of update of Battlezone for the U.S. Army, uh-huh. a secret arcade machine, not really for for, for punters. And he kind of s- explains how um, he was forced by Atari to work on that. He really didn't want to work, do that. And that kind of link, his name's been linked since then to Polybius because it's kind of an, an, uh, a, a US government based machine. So the battle zone stuff was really interesting. But for me, the highlight was talking about the kind of other stuff afterwards. Um, battle zone's great. And there's an updated version, isn't there, Keith? There is. There's a, there's a VR version of it, which is really good fun as well. So yeah. it's still the same kind of wireframe graphics. Love it. You're in the cockpit of the tank, and it's, it's very, cool. very cool. He was a really nice guy. Um, I, I tried to tag him into Twitter once to say, oh, you know, check out this. But he's been banned from Twitter. So I don't know what you did, Ed, on Twitter. I was <laughs> oh. all right, but he's been banned. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, I don't think it's difficult to pee off a certain Mr. Musk these days. No, so. He doesn't okay. like Battlezone, does he? I bet he lost no, it. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, <laughs> he got defeated in Battlezone yeah, VR. Probably. You killed him, Keith. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Had a big strop. No, Ed, uh, Ed killed him in Battlezone. And now he's <laughs> yeah. deleted his account. But um, no, a, a, a fantastic interview. And, it, and it, it, you know, it's, talking about all the um, inner workings of a game like that that's kind of started a whole effectively, you know, the first commercially successful game as well. Um, and it really was successful. It was a big, big hit in the arcades. I used to, I think I used to have a version of it on the uh, Amstrad. I think I had a, a I, I don't, a, I think it was, I think it must have been a, a much later ported version um, in the sort of mid, mid eighties, I think it was. Um, but it was really cool. It was, it was really cool because you could move around, you know, shoot tanks. I mean, like, couldn't do that before. It was mad. So mm. there we are. Battle zone indeed. So, but what, um, you know, what did the, the, the 80s bring in terms of other titles and moves forward for SP- FPS games? So we only had to go one year further forward to 1981 and we had a game by Midway. We all know Midway. Mm-hmm. Wizard of War at War spelt W O R. I've definitely heard of it. Now, this is a bit of a cop out, this one. However, it's kind of considered influential so this wizard of war is more it's it features more of a bird's eye view of a map um like a pac-man style maze it doesn't resemble fps directly but a lot of um sort of industry experts and, and devs previously have said that it's likened in terms of its style to a modern style shooter to the way you navigate and shoot the monsters and things and the objectives and stuff like that so i think the idea of kind of the mechanics of shooting and moving um, were kind of possibly imagined on that, and then the the, the first person view was used off the back of it. Um, so, because you you've probably got to imagine that with a first person game, you've got to do an overhead anyway, because you've got to know how the map's laid out, mm. you know how it looks, where you go, you know which corner you turn around, where the enemies are going to appear. Mm. So, <clears throat> I think they maybe drew a bit of um, uh, inspiration from that. So, similar to to that in look and feel was uh, Muse Software's Castle Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. Does anyone remember the first Castle Wolfenstein? Keith, I, I, you, no. I don't remember it, but we did a Wolfenstein podcast years ago where we talked about the development of that. And obviously that wasn't a first person game. But again, no, it wasn't. The elements of what would later become Wolfenstein. 3D. Yes. 
which I'm sure you'll go on to talk about. Oh, I oh, might yeah, mention it. I might, I might mention, mention it. Kind of important. Yeah. I might mention it. But yeah, it was um that was that was one of the first kind of big names to sort of make its way out. Mm. But yeah, it was it, it wasn't an FPS initially. And funnily enough, as we go through a lot of these games, you'll find that some of the big names they didn't start out as FPS mm. games. Mm. Um, so oddly enough, Duke Nukem, for example. Same. Well, there yeah, we are. Yep. Yes, and that has its own soapbox and all, so you'll have to mm-hmm. wait for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's worth mentioning this one. Um, uh, Taito actually made a game uh, called Gunbuster uh, in the arcades, and it was it was rather tricky to control, because in the one hand you had a joystick, and the other hand you had a light gun. Yeah, so you can nice. imagine... Um, it was That all, sounds cool. Yeah, so it sounds like, cool, it's but... It's like the Lucky and Wild yeah. arcade machine, because yeah. yeah. the steering wheel and the gun. That's cool. Um, have you ever done one play on that where you steer yeah. and you shoot? It's so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There was, um, I think that that reminds me of um, there's like world world's wildest police chases on the on like the PS one or something, and one player controls the person shooting out the window nice. and the other's driving. Yeah. It's mad, but it's I, I think it's pretty much the same for that. You've got to be quite adept at kind of joysticking yeah. and light gunning yeah. at the same time. So that was um, Gunbuster, which I don't think was um, I think was a, a major success in Japan, but I don't not not sure it sort of made it much elsewhere. Hence why you may have not have. I've heard it, but you needed to be pretty adept to make the most out of your quarter or your 10 P uh, then, or whatever they were using in Japan at the time in terms mm. of a coin that went in an arcade machine. So th- um, that was in fact the first free roaming sprite based FPS. Um, and that hit arcades in 88. So if you think about it, we'd, we've moved on quite a bit with mm-hmm. 15 years past May's war and we've only just got to sprite based. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you can imagine, things pick up rather rapidly from here. Mm-hmm. So I have got some other, other, <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got some other notable titles from the eighties, uh, for the genre, um, which either use a full or a part FPS framework. There's one called Midi Maze from Atari. Uh, there was one called Faceball 2000. Oh, I've Faceball. seen that. That was on the SNES. Faceball yeah, 2000. What a title. Um, and, um, in fact, they uh, one up dot com called uh, they called the first multiplayer three D shooter and, and major LAN action game, which was which was uh, Midi Maze and Faceball two thousand. So, you know, I don't know, um, I don't know quite what they did, but they must have done something right, I suppose. Mm-hmm. There, um, but looking back at the eighties, the, the genre. To be fair, let's be honest, very slow to get going. What was what was kind of king of the castles? You know, back in in the sort of late eighties, gaming wise, genre wise. What was really kind of you know okay, beat running the tills? Okay, beat yeah, beat yeah, em ups were yeah, huge. Rolling, beat em ups, platformers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and kind of platformers years. massive. You know, just non-stop conveyor belt of platformers, um, and obviously a lot of brands and a lot of franchises coming out in terms of on the platformers. Yeah. Um, your Mario's and 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 so on and so forth. So when you think about it, F- the FPS as a genre really hadn't got going at all. It was still really struggling and took a long time to, to catch up with, with the rest of gaming. When you think about it. when, but when you think about it, you, you just think FPS is one of those all encompassing genres, don't you? Mm-hmm. But actually it took a long time to, to get going. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, the titles I've just listed about, apart from maybe a few smaller ones, are the only fully developed FPS games that we're about. There are other, there are other few, um, smaller titles, some that people are going to go, you didn't mention this. Um, but you know, again, we're talking commercially successful ones that would have been in kind of all arcades and most people's houses and stuff. Um, but that was until we, we, we very gently dip our toes into the swimming pool that was the 1990s, gentlemen. Now, before we get carried away, with all of the titles that we know and love from the 90s. I know you're itching to say a few. Um, it is worth worth giving some credit to some of the early 90s titles that sort of paved the way. Um, you may have heard of some, you may not. So we've got in 1991, we saw Hover Tank 3D. Anyone anyone heard no, of Hover Tank 3D? Haven't. Check it out. It's actually quite impressive. Um, it used, it developed the ray casting technology, um, which improved on the versions uh, which was used, were used in earlier games, and it gave them a real sense of the light and angles more so. So it kind of developed it a lot more. Um, it's it's quite an impressive looking game for the for the time. Um, I say the time. I mean, yeah, what we're we talking thirty two years ago. Oh, that hurts to say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty impressive for for what it is. Um, We've then got, uh, following shortly after that, we've got ID Software's Catacomb 3D. Mm-hmm. No? I'm, I'm stumping you here, aren't I? Catacomb 3D, another From impressive it, looking it game. Software. Yeah. From id. id, yeah. Uh, which introduced another tech development. This was texture mapping mm-hmm. this time, which again was a 
was a big issue. And that actually, um, instead of having like a pre-rendered, um, you know, just a, just a fixed environment, you at the, 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 uh, the computer actually, the software drew what the player was looking at. Mm -hmm. So you actually had a bespoke, almost a bespoke viewpoint of what you were looking at, which changed the game, you know, yet again, uh, rather than just having a set world around them. Another title release, uh, was Ultima Underworld, the Stygian Abyss from 92. And again, um, used what what's considered one of the most advanced graphics engines up till that point. Oh. So it was now starting to kind of push the boundaries a bit. But because we've not heard of many of these games, you're thinking, hang about, you know, <clears throat> were they big successes? Were they? No, in fact, they, you know, they weren't. They were releases. Some of them did all right. Some of them did quite well. But they weren't runaway successes. They didn't kind of capture the market. FPS still hadn't kind of taken the reins, as it were, of the of the uh, you know the horses and basically run away with it. Mm. So <clears throat> it's a little. It's worth mentioning something though before we go any further. That happened in 1990 uh, with a chap you might have heard of called John Romero. And where was he a software developer? In id software. In id software, indeed. Um, he learned about this new texture mapping style. Um, he was on a phone call uh, with a chap called Paul Nuraf. Um, and he described it to his programmer, uh, who the name would have definitely come up, which was John Carmack. Yeah. Um, and he described it to John and said, look, this is what it does. This is what it is. This is how it runs. This is how it looks. This is what I've heard. And John's reply was, I can do that. So what happened next? <laughs> All I know is that John Carmack is probably the smartest man I've ever um, heard about in video games. He can do anything, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, the stories I've heard from people who say, yeah, I, I, he did it in a weekend. He got Doom work on Jagger in a weekend. He said, I couldn't have done that, but John Car Carmack could. Um, I tried to approach him once for an interview, and he said, look, uh, he did reply back. He said, look, go through, I think he's proper high up now in Google or something, or maybe Apple. I, I don't know, but he said, yeah, you have to go through these channels, but I don't don't, I don't wish, you know, I doubt you're going to get much luck with it, sadly, sorry. But he's smart as, I'll tell you. Listen, you don't ask, you don't get. You know, at the yeah. end of the day, you got. Hey, he still know, replied look, to me. Yeah, but look, look, you know, at the end of the day, look at all the interviews you've had. You oh. know, I mean, it's a, it's a great collection of people. But I mean, to, to kind of bring it bring it back, I mean, he he heard what John had to say, um, and I think, given the limitations of kind of hardware software at the time, most people would have gone, "Oh, you know, that sounds quite tricky." You know, to have all these kind of textured environments and different lighting and has to be a PC you know. game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and sort of you know would have put i would imagine would have put most people off of actually taking on the the uh the risk um but what did happen next so we died was doom before oh you're gonna it, find out wolfenstein 3d oh keith's shaking his head telling you off wolfenstein 3d was for oh <laughs> yeah it was yeah um, so dylan wasn't at the recording of the wolfenstein podcast oh. i believe he was having a baby so, i was having a so baby he gets a oh pass, okay all right <laughs> I'll, I'll let you off that one then. Okay. But we go we go dive in. Well, I was get I was right. I was like, no, I think it was like really. But yeah, we well, with that, good little segue as usual, we go diving headfirst into nineteen ninety two. Um and this is a title that's been credited as as being uh, the very first modern iteration of the FPS genre. Mm. So obviously we've got all of the kind of stuff that went before it and i don't want to you know i don't want to kind of throw any shade or throw any mud over the fence but they were limited either limited releases or limited success if they mm. were releases and you'll have people that like love some of those games and etc but this was this was the first time that it was um kind of the full package was all together in regards to um you know an fps game it is by id software again it's got guns nazis loads of action what is it deal go on Wolfenstein 3D. It is Wolfenstein 3D. <laughs> Not to be confused with Castle Wolfenstein, as Keith rightly pointed no, no. out, which is a platformer. Mm -hmm. So they're, again, the first, um, you know, fully packaged modern FPS was, in fact, initially from a platforming game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it used the previously developed ray casting tech, um, but it gave a new look and feel to the gameplay. So it, it was quite a bright game. Was um, actually, it was, yeah. yeah. It's quite mm. colourful. It's quite colourful. And... Yep, there was there was quite a good reason for that because they couldn't actually differentiate between light and dark areas at the time. Um, so it was it was a case that they had to kind of work with what they had. Yeah. The text. Don't get me wrong. The textures and 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 kind of the way it appears is very impressive for the time. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that kind of crossed my mind when I was looking at this was: Do we think that if FPS had kind of got going a bit earlier, do we think that it would it would look 
would have looked different in the early 90s. Do you think that they would have been further ahead at that point in time when Wolfenstein 3D came out? I mean, because if you look at some other genres, they they really, um, you know, came on in in strength to strength. As soon as you had a kind of an initial seedling, it grew really quickly. Because FPS took a while. FPS games... 20 years. ...can't really be used or couldn't really translate very well to arcade games. Arcade games equal money. Therefore, you put your money into the the genres that make money. Mm. That's a fair shout. Same for a home console market as well. The 16-bit machines weren't really powerful enough. No. No, that's a fair so shout. Again, the money was to be made on your platform games. The easier, yeah. it's cut, cut, uh, cookie cutter style, yeah. isn't it? Just so we think it was more of a. We think it was more of a, the, the the kind of tech wasn't there Possibly, to support yeah. the the experience. Yeah, and the experience would have been a bit. I, I blame John Carmack. He should have done it years ago. <laughs> oh, John, you're not as good as you say <laughs> had, you are. Had they been able to do it well on like eight and sixteen bit consoles, I'm sure the money would have been poured into it then. But at the time, it wasn't. Was it I'd so? say it's yeah. I'd say it's but maybe it wasn't born out of it, you know it was born out of the fact that the, the hardware was getting better rather than yeah it, the fact that it wasn't advances in the software or industry or whatever. That's a fair shout. But what do we think about Wolfenstein 3D? We've all played it, presumably. Mm. Yeah. What mm. do we think about it as a as a game? Kind of then when you first played it, and maybe now. Thoughts it hasn't obviously hasn't aged as well as Doom. I don't think it hasn't. No. But did you did you enjoy it when you played it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you still do you still dip in now and then? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked the I, what I loved about the boat most was there's hidden rooms and secret. Yes, areas. indeed. I loved exploring it. I remember playing, and I loved that playing Wolf Sun for the first time, looking around, pressing the space bar and all these walls, hoping they're open up. And the final boss, I still remember it. It's it like Adolf Hitler in a massive mech well, suit, well, wasn't yeah, it? It's yeah, absolutely yeah. incredible. Quite <laughs> scary, but. So colourful, it doesn't, yeah. it shouldn't really, the colours are a bit, not jarring, that's not the right word, but it's not really quite, the later Wolfen signs are a bit more gloomy, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. didn't, it didn't reflect kind of the mood, basically. Oh, very fun um, game. But that's because of, as I said before, you know, the, the, this whole ray casting situation was they developed it to a point, but it, it couldn't differentiate light and dark areas, oh, and it, and it couldn't actually show you, you know, when there was like a, a, a I think there's, cat, there's, there's big candlesticks, isn't there, and things like that. They're all the same. Yeah, like the torches and stuff on the walls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all effectively the same brightness, yeah. which you know was one of the one of the downsides. Um, it is worth mentioning that that Wolfenstein 3D was very very close to receiving a, a lot of criticism, obviously around its violent content and subject matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but due to another title release shortly afterwards, which we'll come on to in a moment, mm-hmm. um, it actually avoided quite a lot of criticism. To be fair, because it was shifted to this other title, mm-hmm. um, it was however banned in Germany. No surprises yeah. there, due to its use of Nazi symbolism. Yeah. Um, you can't really explain that one away um, when the final boss, as we've said, is Hitler in a massive mech suit, <laughs> which is about as, as unsubtle as you can make yeah. it. Thankfully, the world's moved on a bit since then, and yeah. we can kind of look back and realise that, you know, it was it is a a work of fiction. So, um, but yeah, so we we, um, we we've we basically kind of plopped Wolfenstein 3D on the map. Um, I like it. I think it's a funky game. Mm. I think the sounds are quite cool. Um, Mm. and yeah, it's clunky, it's quite bright, it looks a bit weird and like colorful, but it's still good fun. Yeah, it Mm. is good fun. I think it really is. Um, but it, it kind of was the little brother, the prerequisite, Mm. the kind of understudy, Mm. um, as we've probably always, you know, always said, um, to that, it, it, let's say, or or we could say that, um, Wolfenstein was the grandfather of modern FPS. What was the daddy of them? Well, can I just chip in? Go on then. Because... My computer, my first PC, could play yep. could play Wolfenstein, but it wasn't power enough to play powerful enough to play Doom. Yeah, if I wanted to play Doom, I played it on a postage stamp size screen, like zoomed down, mm. and I could just about play it. And I had to go right close to the monitor. Mm. It was no go. So I do remember my PC could play Wolfenstein 3D style games. Excellent. So just before I got a better PC, about you know about a year after Doom had come out, um, my uncle came over one day and said, oh, I know you can't play Doom, but I got you this. And he gave me this game. I'll never forget it. And it's it's not even that good. But it's called Corridor 7. I bet that's not on your list. No, it's not. Corridor 7. Corridor Corridor 7. 7. It was an, a space shooter, an FPS game, basically Wolfenstein graphics, but with aliens and stuff. And it's colourful and a bit silly. But because I, was, I had Doom Envy, I was like, well, this is better than nothing. And I actually quite enjoyed it. Corridor 7. Um, good shout it hasn't aged well I've done some screen I thought God, maybe I could review this game actually I played it again recently I bought like a pack of these old games for like two quid on Steam and it, it's really bad um, but I just want to sh- have a little shout out to some of the underdogs Corridor 7 there was another game as well called Body Count 
Yes. I, yep. Yep. I have. That's I have, kind yep, of in I'm, between Wolfenstein and Doom. Yeah. So, and, and I think there was another game. I can't remember what it's called now. But a, I remember playing a few FPS games around that time before I got my proper itch with Doom or even Duke Nukem 3D. But I just want to shout out the kind of more obscure. No, that's that's a great shout because actually there's an, and it's well worth um, checking out. And I, I had a look at this list as well. There's a quite a comprehensive list. Um, you guys know the fandom uh, websites that the, yeah. they, they basically have um, fan wiki on everything yeah. you can imagine, TV shows, games, everything. Um, and they have a comprehensive list in year order of FPS games, early FPS games, nice. which goes up, it only goes up to about 99, I think. Um, but there's like 150 or what on there. But it, um, I definitely remember body count being on that list. And yep. I don't, I don't remember corridor seven, but it would almost certainly have been on there. But, the um, if I miss any out, go and check that list out on fandom and literally. I mean, if you go to Google and just type in um, uh, um, FPS games, uh, you know, nineties FPS games, it comes up with that list. So well worth checking out there because then you can see if your your favourite uh, is on the list. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Wolfenstein three D. Um, I mean, you know, it's 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 got its place, but again, we we know that obviously the big 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 title we've just said it is Doom. Um, anyone know when it released? 93? It was 93. Do you know what I have a guess at the month? <laughs> November. Ooh, December. December. It was December 93. And it was actually um, one of the first games to be released via a shareware, shareware. distribution. Mm-hmm. Anyone want to explain what shareware was, is? I know that it was like... So Doom, there's three big chapters. And each chapter had maybe about 10 or so levels. And you could buy the shareware of, of like chapter one very cheaply. Maybe for like five pounds. And after you finish that share where it says, well, make sure you get, if you want the full experience, buy the full game. Very clever way. It wasn't, it wasn't a demo. It wasn't a full game. No. It was in between. Mm-hmm. And it's I like think. It was try before you buy. It was try before you buy. And I, I remember getting quite a few of those. And I think I got a shareware version of um, I think Rise. Wolfenstein might have been. Yeah. Wolfenstein I think that's right. was as well when it came out. Rise, yeah. Rise of the Tri- Triads. I don't know if you're going to mention that game. I am. I that, that, I think I got that initially on shareware. And I think John Bitten. The lucky scoundrel, he got the full version. So I had the yeah, shareware yeah, yeah. share yeah, version, he had the full one. Oh yeah. my goodness, man. Yeah, I'll come on to that in a minute. But he, he was like, he had a bank of FPS games. He was like, yeah, he, he he's like a library, that boy. Look at that. I'm just showing Keith for the Corridor 7. Corridor 7. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> Corridor 7, Alien Invasion, is a first-person shooter video video game developed by Capstone Software mm-hmm. and published by Intracorp and GameTech. Uh, the game received poor reception Largely due to its out of date, outdated technology. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this is the, you, again another nice segue because yeah. this is the difference. Outdated. You use outdated oh. Wolfenstein 3D engine. Oh yeah, <laughs> it can still work. That, but that this is the thing. It changed so quickly because within a year, uh, Wolfenstein was it was it, was effectively seen as outdated, mm. unfortunately, yeah, that's true, because. Yeah. Um, Doom came in and had uh, made... Wait, when did Doom come in again? 94? 93. December 93. This came in March 94. <laughs> Corridor 7. Yeah, that's why they... <laughs> so they were, well, so they were using the, the... Yeah, so there you go. That, that kind of explains it then. It's funny. But, um, but yeah, the most the most important part of Doom versus Wolfenstein in terms of moves forward was the use of more in-depth graphics, lighting, variations in level and heights, which was a big change yeah. because in Wolfenstein it's it was one flat. level... It yeah. was flat corridors, yeah. etc. Whereas Doom, you have stairs, you can drop down, you can but climb up, etc. You can't move your gun around, can you? You can't. No, so it was horizontal mm. aiming, yeah. which is which is what they um, what the the, the industry uh, likes to kind of label it as. It's only horizontal aiming, so left and right, etc. Funny thing was though, in Doom, if you remember correctly, you could actually fire at enemies that were quite high up the screen That's just right. by aiming along the line. Mm-hmm. So if you drew a vertical line on the screen. Um, and you had an enemy that was on that line, even though your gun was pointing way underneath. Oh yeah, it went straight you'd, up. You'd still shoot them. <laughs> yeah, you which... know those cartoons where they they twist they twist the shotgun up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's almost like one of those shotguns. <laughs> There's no better sound in video games than the shotgun in, in Doom. Well, ah, which one? I want to say the double shotgun. Oh, that wasn't in Doom. Doom Two. I want to say the shotgun mm. in Doom. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the pump action you got yeah. the pump action so cool. the double barrel didn't make the super shotgun didn't make an appearance until number two okay. so hold your horses <laughs> um, but this was uh, there was a lot of other complexity as well the enemies looked different they moved differently projectiles uh, were, you know the projectiles being shot at you were very different mm. you had fireballs like plasma balls and um, you know bullets from obviously the, the normal sort of zombie soldiers type thing it was a very different um, affair but it used a lot of these differences to its advantage 
Um, and a lot of people have credited it um, hugely by giving, you know, for giving them a more immersive experience. You could go through dark corridors, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was light differences. You could have flickering candles or lights on in the distance. Um, and the audio took a big step forward as well. You had different enemies making different noises. Um, and quite unnerving, to be fair, when you go into some of the levels and they're going, <laughs> and you're like, what is that? <laughs> so, yeah, very, um, very much a move forward um, with uh, Doom. Much more depth, much more varying audio, and obviously the graphics were a big step up as well. Um, personal favourite weapon in Doom, gentlemen? Shotgun slash chainsaw. Okay, Adrian's... Oh, the minigun, obviously. Yeah, yeah the, the chain gun. I say that, yeah. The chain gun. gun. Yeah. I, love the, I love the chainsaw, yeah. just yeah. for its hilarity. Oh, the chainsaw, Because yeah. yeah. the fact that you, if you keep it going, the enemy can't attack you because they're recoiling from every yeah. hit. So it's not very powerful, but mm. you can get them. Yeah. Um, but uh, once again, due to the fact that he's just so damn good at getting such um, big names onto the pods, yeah, he's sitting there blushing. But Adrian, you interviewed American McGee, did you not? Real, um, real interesting guy. Yeah, one of my favourite interviews. It's I'd a really say. Good interview. Thank you. Yeah, no, nice. honestly, I, I've, I didn't do any work. Really, he did all of it. He <laughs> gave some great stories. Really honest. And the story of how he got into the video game industry and working with id Software was so fascinating, mm. in my opinion. And I loved hearing how he had tough upbringing, tough, tough life, and he kind of. Well, he, he, out of nowhere, he got this opportunity and he took it. Yeah. Um, I mean, he gave some really good insights as well. And actually, I think it was it was quite good to hear a bit of a warts and all type story as well. You know, because you can rose tint a lot oh, of that stuff. Oh, he's very honest, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. which I think is nice. You know, and people people kind of appreciate that when, you, when you're truthful rather than just saying, oh, it was all great. We were all mates. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got on so well. Yeah, I did this in a you know, week and it was great. But it's it's much better when it's a bit more raw. So, um, <clears throat> but he worked obviously on the first Doom game and and uh, later on Ultimate Doom as well. Okay. Um, but he had a bit of a whirlwind time at uh, it, didn't he, Adrian? So he did. But, I mean, best thing to do if you want to hear all about it, the interviews it's all available, isn't it? So uh, yeah, and sadly, it's been just announced that his his project, his, his latest Alice title, which he's had a lot a lot in the pipeline, a lot of funding. Has been, I think EA have not given the rights to him, so it's it's been. I think canned. that was last yeah. month or something. Yeah, really it? sad yeah. news, and I, I really think he's a very passionate man. If you're really passionate about something, mm. and there is a, there is people want this Alice game, so EA, you know, I know we love you on Arcade Attack, but God, we really hate EA, yeah. don't we? <laughs> <laughs> sort it we out, don't guys. mind we don't mind Electronic Arts, but we don't like EA. No, it's true. That's yeah, that's, that's the difference. Yeah. That's, a, that's a fair. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a fair assessment. But um, yeah, I mean, if if you want to listen to all that great stuff, you. Do go and have a listen to it because, as as Keith says, it's a, it's a fantastic interview. Um, lots of insight, loads of stories, um, especially if you're interested in these types of games and the development stuff. So, just well, moving uh, back slightly to um, Doom's creator John Romero, he actually wanted the games. He actually wanted to bring in a deathmatch concept. And Adrian, I know you might have a little story about um, two computers in your house. One of them didn't run it very well. Um, <clears throat> but the concept, he wanted to make it feel like a, a competitive multiplayer nature. And he, he wanted to kind of echo the competitiveness of the um, of games like Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury. So even though very different style of game, he wanted that kind of edge of your seat competitiveness mm. where you're running around essentially trying to get one up on your mate <clears throat> or, or mates or brothers or whatever. Um and it, it was thought that it would take Doom in a new direction and, and be, you know, a lot more popular among gamers looking to play with friends across LAN, which thanks to, I would say, mainly RTS games coming up through the through the ranks, which were exploding at this time. Yeah. Um, LAN parties. Pun intended. Yeah. Whee! LAN parties were, were becoming a, a real a real a real thing. They weren't just kind of geeks in basements. This was a lot of people were doing it. So um you know, FPS was throwing their hat into the ring with Doom deathmatch style multiplayer gaming. Um, but little did he know, um, the, the, and the rest of the team, just how popular that would kind of be and what kind of doors that would open. Because if you think about jumping forward to now, you know, there's, I can't even think about how many games there are that have online multiplayer mm-hmm. deathmatch modes. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> but it engaged so many people. Um, to play Doom and jump on that bandwagon, it actually started to cause some major issues within companies um, and their networks because so many people were online at once. Okay, it was so causing cool. frequent bandwidth restrictions. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're the boss of a company, like we've been doing all day playing Doom. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, boss. We mentioned it. Me and Dylan did a Doom pod, didn't we, a while mm. ago? And I think it's the only video game mentioned in Friends, isn't it? I think Chandler. it is. Yeah, Chandler's playing it on his little laptop, dear. <laughs> 
Awesome. You could do this, this, and this. What are you going to do with it? Play, Probably play, play Doom. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's we I've, we've talked about these a number of times in past pods, but there's people that have got Doom running on like an Epson printer screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, the fridge. Do, yeah. We the get fridge. It. Um, what Stop was the other, now. What was the other ZX Spectrum? Wasn't oh, it? Yeah. Doom yeah. on the ZX. Actually, actually, that one's alright. Yeah. I almost got banned from Twitter, no, from Reddit for that account. It oh, yeah. Steam. Yeah. Do you remember, oh. Do you remember the, the mods? They weren't happy with me. Mate, those we mods. We wouldn't normally allow that. <laughs> 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 we don't normally allow that. <laughs> yeah, like Basically, I shared my interview with, um, I forget his name now, the Jaguar guy. For goodness sake. But, but he, spoke, you know, he, he spoke about how John Carmack got Doom on the Jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, it wasn't James some... Hampton, was it? What? Was it James Hampton? He did AVP. No, that's AV, that's Animus Predator. Jaguar guy. Jaguar producer. Oh, it'll come to us maybe. But my point is, yeah, that red that they don't they don't like me over there when it runs deep. <laughs> oh, Adrian. <laughs> causing problems again. Well, despite Doom's uh, critical and commercial success, um, it did draw a fair fair bit of controversy, actually, funnily enough. Uh, many religious groups condemned the violence, sure. um, and some reviewers they call uh, actually labelled it the because mur- there's no violence in religion, is there? No, not at all. No, <laughs> I mean you can't see the irony there whatsoever, can you? But um, we're not going to get into that. But but um, <laughs> some reviewers, I don't know. I mean, what their experience of video games was beforehand mm. actually labelled it the murder simulator. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I mean, come on, man. I mean, if you like, it's great publicity though. We- isn't it just? Amazing. Because then everyone wants to see it yeah. and play it. Of course they do. I mean, it's easy to sit here now and go, oh, yeah, but it looks, it's just, you know, it doesn't like, there's no violence in it. It's only like, you know, aliens getting shot. Demons, yeah. But then obviously at the time, you know, you had the blood coming off. You had them kind of like, when you blew them up with a rocket launcher, they kind I of like. 93, you're talking around the time when they had those hearings in America with mm, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, yeah. Nitrat that senator and, bloke, yeah. what's his name? Well. Oh. No. No. What was it? Oh. We spoke about it, didn't we? That senator Errol guy, Compton. yeah, I know. Cannon so every- fodder and all that jazz. It was all in the news, wasn't it? Yeah. There was, and also it was, it was well, loosely, and I, and I, again, you can go and look this up as a, as a separate strand, as, as it were. But Lieberman, Le- Lieberman, uh, Lieberman. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Lieberman. That's it. Thank. He's you. got it now. He's woken up. But it was it was loose. Well, a lot of people tried to say that it was linked to the to the Columbine um, shootings. Well, yeah. didn't they design a, a later, they made a level a, in it or something? They, they made found, a count. No, that's did later. It. They made a Counter Strike level, didn't they? Map. Yeah, because Columbine something was like, like ninety nine. No, they, so yeah, I think you, that's slightly wrong timeline, James. Well, well, they, maybe they did play the Doom games, but no, honestly, no, well, no, no, no. They th- what they were saying is they were they were saying that they drew experiences from that type of game, right, from yeah. those games, and they were they actually specifically cited Doom. I'm just as remembering one of the... something weird. I think they either designed, yeah, they either designed the level of the school either in they did they redesigned the school in Counter Strike. Counter Strike, oh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah Counter Strike obviously was quite a bit later. We, but... we spoke about that in a separate podcast in the past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but uh, yeah, I'm I'm I, again, I could be wrong. I could could stand to be corrected, but apparently. Apparently, the the there they used to you know play this at length, and then people were like, "Oh, we put two and two together. It must oh. be the must be that yeah, video yeah, game. Yeah. Then must be that must be the fall of it." Be, and right. obviously, it's just because they're monsters, basically. Yeah, but that was the time when the whole violence in video games thing exploded. The whole kind of opinion, and mm. obviously, that's pretty much been put to bed with various studies and things like yeah. that. So, <coughs> so chaps, let's move on to pastures new, shall we? We're in the mid nineties. Uh, quick look back at what we've mentioned here, um, and what you know is that you know the genre as a whole. Should Doom be considered the most important FPS made? Should it? Maybe not. Could important. it? Should it? Should it? Yeah. Should it be labelled the most important FPS? Yes, yes, and no. Yes, in the fact that it completely opened up the genre to new players mm. to experience this particular type of game. Yeah. Wolfenstein 3D started the way, but they Doom opened up the floodgates. Yeah. But harshly. In a slightly harsh opinion, it's just a slightly, well, not slightly, a lot glossier version of Wolfenstein 3D. It doesn't add too much extra on the on, on the bare bones of that game. I would argue, I'm going to say it, games like Duke Nukem 3D, although it's a bit jokey here and there, I think took it to another direction. You had you had landscapes that would explode. You'd have like, you could shoot up and down. You could like jump around. You could mm, up, you that's know, true. Yeah, I, I personally think, even though I love Doom, I think it, 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 it's... Maybe I'd go a little bit later on mm. of the real definitive ones. That's a fair assessment, I would say. Because, mm. I mean, you know, we we do... It does get mentioned all the time yeah. mm. as a knee-jerk reaction to FPS. You know, what is the greatest... You know, the, the first FPS... Well, it's not the first. It was just the glossier version of 
things had already been yeah, done at the I time, mean, wasn't it? Exactly, exactly. And and I mean, in my opinion, it was the right game with the right ingredients that came along at the right time. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of used existing technology, mm-hmm. existing platforms. And there, I don't think there was anything wildly new. Yes, you had the different textures, the lighting. When they did Quake with the fully 3D engine. Ah, Boom. Ah, ooh, Quake, you say. But then I might have had more fun playing Rise of the Triad than Doom. And I feel a bit harsh saying that because I really enjoyed Doom. But Rise of the Triad, you could jump around platforms. It's more kind of interactive. Yep. Mm-hmm. The graphics were a bit... I don't know what... You could have two ha- You could have two guns. You could. You could have two guns. Double Uzis. Dual wielding. Dual. Dual wielding. You can't have guns dual Kimbo. guns in Doom. Yeah. No, you can't. Um, but it'd be interesting to hear what everyone sort of thinks it's on this. It's hard to say, though, what's most important. But this like, is the is whole the thing. Most, it's a can of worms. the best one, but is it the most important... I don't think Doom progressed the genre. I think that's what we're saying, isn't it? It can't be the most so important if it's not progressed it. Yeah. Most important. It's more and important. Then just followed on from it. Yeah, it's more important, isn't it? Did it I, I think it goes back to what we said a minute ago, which was, did it represent a time where hardware was ready enough that mm. studios could then start to really go to town on that genre? Mm. Because if we're saying, as, and I agree with you, in terms, you know, the more money was was better spent and made swear, yeah. in other genres. Certainly, the RTS was was blowing up. Mm. You know, certainly the beat 'em up was was strong, yeah, yeah. really strong up to that point and further beyond that. You know, and then you had the RPG games. You know, all that sort of stuff coming out. So all the money was there, but the hardware wasn't there for the FPS because obviously it, it needed that graphical kind of leg up, didn't mm. it? Because it has to paint the world as you kind of yeah. see it. Mm-hmm. So was Doom re- representing a kind of watershed moment for the hardware to say, or Maybe. you know, yes, it was ready, or mm. I don't know. I mean, uh, this Maybe. is one. I mean, you get again. It comes out December ninety three, ninety four, or ninety five is when the sat the thirty two bit consoles come yeah. along. Yeah, and they were able to do there you go uh, FPS games. Mm-hmm. So if they saw the horizon there with with those yeah. coming out, you think, hang on, we've got some better hardware coming out here. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to think about. There's a lot to unpack, but best thing to do there is throw it open to, to socials, I suppose. And, you know, if there's anyone out there who's got a, a bit of a meaty opinion on it, let us know. So, <clears throat> what you're saying is if they've got a boner for Doom. If they've got a boner for Doom. Yeah. Well, you either have or you haven't. You know, it's, well, you've got three stages, boner, semi or none. And then, you know, for... But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, let, let us know what you think. Was, you know, it was or is Doom as, as, as influential and as groundbreaking the, as, as maybe... What yeah. does BFG stand for then? Boner, something? Big, big gun. gun. <laughs> Not big flaccid gun. Big, big flaccid, flaccid gun. gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Slap. really just do what we want now, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we don't care. We like Ricky Gervais at the last Golden Globes. <laughs> I don't care. We don't you care. did it. Whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> So now we kind of we get up to the stage where uh, I would say a lot of people would label this this kind of coming period as the golden age of FPS games, mm-hmm. uh, which was kind of the mid to late nineties, um, and things really the uh, when we talk about floodgates, it was just floodgates. So first on my list on the on the little whistle stop tour um, is a game called Heretic. Does oh, anyone yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Heretic loved Heretic. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like a magical doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um, it was really enjoyable. They kind of took the whole wizarding world, made it a bit kind of gritty and dark. Mm. Um, and the enemies were, were properly sort of, um, you know, butch and, and horrible as well. Um, and um, it took the Doom engine and, and essentially incorporated a couple of extra bits. So it, it incorporated the ability to store and select items, which hadn't been done before. So you could, you could pull from an inventory. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, vertical aiming. Yes. Mm. We've had the horizontal aiming. We've now got the vertical aiming, which in many respects made it harder yeah. because you had to actually aim at the enemies rather than just kind of, well, maybe that mm-hmm. direction will do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you had a bit of a, um, you had a bit of a tougher time there, but I think that's, that was what, you know, was part of the, uh, part of the draw. Really good, um, immersive gameplay. I loved Hexen and I was going to say, was Hexen yeah. a sequel mm. to Heretic? Oh, sorry, Heretic. Hexen was the sequel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heretic was, was the first and then Hexen came afterwards. Um, again, developed, uh, more. Um, and I mean, the, they also, um, introduced a few other uh, graphical elements as well. And they really played on the whole light dark thing because you had a lot of levels that were mm. very different in shading and, and stuff like that. And mm. it looked, it looked really cool. Um, but I played both of those until my hands hurt. So, um, but an interesting fact about these two games is that they had a feature called Jibs or Gibbs, G I B S. Anybody know what that stands for? In the, um, I'm in the, I'm in the dev speak now. I'm in the dev speak. 
Sounds graphical? Like that. No. Well, it's to do with graphics, yes, but it's not. It's it's not. As kind Geometry? of technical. Geometry? No, not uh, Now you've spoiled it. You see, you've ruined it now. <laughs> <laughs> Jibs is actually, um, it's short for giblets, funnily enough. Now, hey, bear with me. Okay. Um, and it meant that um, body parts or pieces of flesh could fly off an enemy's body if it was enough, <laughs> if enough force was used to rupture it. So, wow. i.e., if you threw a grenade or yeah. shot a magic spell that was to explode or whatever, that the enemy would literally blow apart into pieces. Nice. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, yes, it drew criticism mm. once again, sure. because people were like, okay, yep. this is getting a bit too much now. Um, most people loved it, of course, because it meant you could dissect your enemies in mm-hmm. various different ways. Um, and yeah, no press is bad press. That was taken to another level on another FPS game called Kingpin. I don't know if you've heard, heard about I this. I shall mention Kingpin. Oh, you're going to, sorry? After, oh. I, I, well, we'll skate over it, but I'll, I'll come to you because I, I have a little story about that, about playing it around your house. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Ah. Um, I don't know if you remember. Um, but Apogee then and Entertainment then gave us the gore-ridden Jib-filled, I can use Jib now, jib see, because I've told you what it is, Rise of the Triad in December of yeah. 94. You love it. Adrian just loves it's it. It's a great game. Well, It's, it's fun. It, it is good fun, and it's it's a bit crazy. I think I've it's never a bit played nuts. it. I've never played it. It's I know you so can cool. Jump around all the time, shoot things, and you must have it. You must have it. Oh yeah, I've got it. Yeah, you've got it somewhere. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really it's a it's what I would consider a, like one of the cool shooters. Like it's a proper like adult kind of shooter. Isn't it? Yeah, it's really gory. I like the look of it. It it's different to Doom. I can't really explain why. It's kind of silvery and grey and jumpy, and it, it got two guns, and you kind of yeah. feel like you're Matrixy jumping around. Oh, it's havoc. massively over the top, but that's yeah. that's part of the appeal, I think. Um, they they went they really went to town on in depth level design, and they used persisting bullet holes, so you could essentially shoot, you know, cars and bit, you know, concrete and the floor and whatever, and the bullet holes would stay. That's right, yeah. Um, which which was a it doesn't sound you know that interesting, but it's like interactive scenery almost, yeah, mm-hmm. which is a huge step forward. Um, and you could also break windows, sheets of glass, etc. Um, so things you know destructible environments. So things were really ramping up. Um, for for kind of the immersion stakes, they were really looking to get people dragged into the game. Um, so Rise of the Tribe was originally meant to be. It was actually meant to be, believe it or not, a bit of trivia, a sequel to Wolfenstein 3D. <laughs> yeah, originally it was it was tabled as a sequel. Um. But it was altered in its early development stages to just be a standalone game. So yeah. there we go. Yeah, I, who'd have thought? Like, I, I would played it for years, but I must yeah, give it a go. I mean, how would you? You know, how would you kind of link those? Well, you can't. You can't, can you? Really? But there we go. Um, but hot on the heels of the likes of um, Hexen and Rise of the Triads, um, Lucas Arts was never too far away, were they? They were always fishing mm-hmm. about. <laughs> yeah, bless them. And they wanted a slice of this cherry pie. Oh, yes. Of the yeah, FPS Guybrush pie. Freepwood has gone crazy. He's, he's gone mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone berserk. He's gone <laughs> berserk nuts. mode. Your he's... adventure, first person. First person. S- gum cannon flying. and stuff. Grog cannon. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd play a monkey on an FPS game. <laughs> there we go. There's a, there's an idea tabled already. Um, <clears throat> but there was... Um, that, I mean, they had a, a an engine that they used to use at LucasArts called I, iMuse, the iMuse engine. And they brought us Star Wars Dark Forces in 1995. Mm-hmm. Good game, you know. Good Has game. anyone who's not seen it? I've seen it. No, I've seen never it. Owned yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of, it looks a bit odd and a bit little janky, but it's like, I don't know. It's as good as they could have possibly got and as close as they could have got to one of playing one of the films at the time. Mm. Um, and there's, it's quite cinematic, but a little bit janky as well. It's kind of, I don't know. I haven't got particularly. Janky cinematic is the genre officially. Yeah. Janky Janky cinematic. cinematic. I I actually agree with that. The graphics aren't amazing, but it's, it's a fun game. Oh, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. It's playing Star Wars. I mean, you Mm. you know. Yeah. You shoot the stormtroopers down. It's good. Yeah, and you can collect their guns as well, can't you? And you can use. That's right. There was parts of it that were very clever at the time. Um, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's good. I'm I'm probably being a bit unfair to it because it's it. You know it. It looks it looks pretty decent. I just remember it being a little bit clunky, but maybe that was just um, my sort of thirteen, fourteen year old brain at the time. Um, but it's a uh, it, it's it's quite a faithful um, game. In that the graphics are very film like storm stormtroopers and other sprites and stuff. The movement's quite slick. Um, it's quite dark in in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, I mean that's just you'd expect that from as I say they've they've got the hang of using the light and dark areas. So why not use the darkness a bit more? Um, and we're now going to come to a game that was yeah, pretty much loved, hated, and caused controversy all at the same time. Adrian loves this one. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and actually decided to wheel in uh, a bit of humour into the uh, yeah. into the genre, and it shed loads. Yeah. Um, it peed a few people off. It got some headlines. Um, there was a lot of controversy, but then people kind of loved it universally. Main character, blonde, chisel jawed, foul mouthed. John, yeah. John Cena look alike. John Cena loved mm. to blow up aliens and smoke a stogie whilst he was at it. Who am I talking about, Adrian? The Mr. Duke Nukem. Indeed, and not just any Duke Nukem. What was the what what was the actual full game title? Oh, what was it again? Duke Nukem. I'm just looking for 3D. the D. Yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> and why is it Duke Nukem 3D? Why did they yeah. have to put 3D on the end of it? Because it used to be in 2D. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> it was a platform. platform. platform yeah. It was. There was a Duke Nukem games, one actually, and two. Yeah. Um, and that was from 1996. Mm. Um, and as I said, it is worth pointing out that it's the third installment. There were two previous games. 91 was the first game, believe it or not. And 93 was the second. Um, 3D was, was by all accounts, as we said, a very different game. Um, quite an adult themed affair. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Even from, even from the outset, the first <laughs> level, which I remember very well. I um, can read. I can replay the first one. Carnage, oh, no, give it. Give us a few of the naughty themes in the first level. Was there? There's obviously there's toilets. You can actually open the toilet door and find you, an alien in the toilet. You can go to the toilet. Money. You can flush the toilet. I think yep. there's a strip club as well. Yep. Like there's dance, a strip. Yep. You can find a, a dead body, a dead a dead um, doom guy body. I think as well. Maybe you not can. the first level. Maybe it is. Um, this is great. The pipe bombs are great. Yeah. Look, I again. I don't want to. We got a whole pod on this. Yeah. We Love have. it beautiful game i love how you can blow up certain walls as well go through bits and you can go up and down stairs it's, it's weird you couldn't really do all that sort of stuff in it was games. it was a lot more fluid um yeah. again it it we we talk about it being like we've got to be careful with like ground the word groundbreakers of that mm. what it did really well was take a lot of existing technology and used it to its you know potential because the lighting is great the enemies are funny you know they're kind of like you've got pig like warthog cops walking yeah, around yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some of his one liners are great. Mm. And you, um, I think one of the ones that sticks with me, funnily enough, don't take this as, as any indication of my character, but you, you got the little peep show screens, haven't you? Do you remember? Yeah, oh, yeah. So you go to the yeah, booth, yeah, you yeah. press the button, and it's just like a woman in lingerie just dancing around. Like, I, right now. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine at the time, just absolute scandal? You know, you can't have that. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what was going on in the game. Um, and I mean, it, um, it, you know, what Doom has started, Duke, Duke Nukem 3D was, was, you know, grew on essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the game. It's massively violent. Mm-hmm. Um, the explosions are over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, if you want to hear kind of the real breakdown of it, listen to the pod, listen mm-hmm. to the pod and you know where to go. Um, so, you know, why, why was it so controversial? We've just talked about that pretty much, but I mean, you know, it it just once again moved the genre on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it had some bad headlines, but let's be honest: no press is bad press. No. You're going to go and play it because you want to see what the what the fuss mm-hmm. is all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so the game actually it, it ran on something called the Build Engine, yes. um, mm-hmm. and it is an ah. This is an important point. It's actually considered Duke Nukem 3D is considered uh, one of the last great sprite based shooters. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because yeah, obviously the after still sprite. Yeah, exactly. So after that, you know, it was more about the multiplayer side of things. Mm-hmm. It was character models. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's it's kind of a little bit sad because you think, oh, okay, that that part End of the of genre the is dying. Yeah, because sprite based shooters they didn't have a great big window, did they? It was essentially right. the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. You know, that was it. It was over in a flash. Yeah. You know, so. Um, unlike some other uh, platforms that kind of you know went went with it for years, um, yeah, they didn't have uh, a, a much opportunity. So that the the, the uh, swan song of the sprite based shooters, uh, many consider is Duke Nukem. <laughs> so there you go. It won all sorts of critical acclaim. Uh, consumers loved it for its dark humour and the fast pace and over the top gameplay. But it did uh, come under fire for its persistent reinforcing of the male macho stereotype. Yes, yeah? it did. Um, and the, and the derogatory presentation of women. Yes. In inverted commas. <coughs> that, that was uh, put in some of the headlines. Um, but you know, to me thinking about it now, it, it is funny as hell, but it also, like, when you go through it and you play it, you do still kind of give a bit of an ooh or a cringe at some of the bits, don't you? Cause you yeah. think, how have you got away with that? You know, <laughs> but maybe that's, you it know, it was the nineties. It was the nineties indeed. Um and it you know, it was quite edgy. But I mean Dill Keith, like 
Final words on Duke Nukem 3D. Do you guys I think it's just great. love it, hate it, yeah. enjoy it? You said it was it wasn't groundbreaking, but it was wall breaking. <laughs> Destructible environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's fun game. Yeah, it's it, it is a good fun game, and I I uh, fondly put that in in sort of a, a definitely a top. What what should we put it in a top top ten or a top five yeah. of, of FPS of the nineties? Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's up there. My list, yeah. So um, it's one thing really worth pointing out up until this point uh the vast majority of fps games were released for ibm compatible pc systems mm. yeah it was just a conveyor belt at this point really um and nobody else got a look in however macintosh um released their first shooter back in 93 believe it or not they they wanted a slice of the pie way back when and they they made a game called pathways into darkness heard of it no no nope. Didn't think you would have. I don't think most people have, to be fair. Um, it was, it's a bit cheeky to put it as an FPS because it's an adventure game with FPS elements. Um, but it is worth mentioning um, because it's kind of one of those first titles of that type to appear on a different platform because PC was just ruling the roost. Um, and let's be honest, now, if you want a game, you don't buy a Mac. You know, it's, it's, it's PC all the way or it's console, which we'll come on to in a minute because I haven't mentioned consoles at all really have I and why haven't I because of the hardware yeah so as our 90s juggernaut powers on uh, we come to a game which took the solid foundations of the likes of of Doom and Duke Nukem actually um, and incorporated a brand new look and feel um, using real time rendered polygonal easy for me to say models in in place of the classic little sprites yeah so this title also presented in a completely 3D environment and drove a huge additional following into LAN parties and player clans as well. Any ideas of what I'm talking about, chaps? Quake. Quake. Of course it's Quake. Quake. What else would it be? Ah, what Quake. else would it be? The massive Quake. This is the one. I mean, you're talking about FPS now Ooh. and FPS on the whole. Yeah, because well, the first guys were like pioneering. Blah, blah, blah. Quake. It's funny because it often, it's weird. It depends on who you talk to, mm. where they sit on the kind of gaming fence. Some people probably wouldn't even give it a look in. They'd go, oh, yeah, Doom was the first, Wolfenstein was the first, this was the first, that was the first. And they kind of then gloss over and then skip to Call of Duty, right? But, yes, Quake was, when you think about it, is the epitome of a modern first-person mm-hmm. shooter, mm-hmm. yeah? Um, and why? Why Why? Why would you say, for those who kind of aren't in the know, why would you say that Quake is that another sort of watershed moment? Because it's not sprite-based. It's obviously, it's like rendered objects. It's... You control it in the way you do a current FPS, so full 360 movement, 360 yep. aiming, and just, just, yeah. Quake. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to the bottom of the matter. Quake. <laughs> but yeah, exactly what you've just says on the tin, to be fair. Loads of gory violence, crazy weapons, and a lot more intricate. And it was fun, movies. actually. I think people were like, oh, you know, Quake is groundbreaking. Fun game. Damn fun game. It, it's made more fun by the fact you can literally just blow people apart with shotguns, rail guns, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's it, it is good fun, and it's again another quite dark presentation. Oh, very dark. Mm, yeah. I love um, it gloomy. I love gloom. Yeah, but Do you love gloom, gloom and the Amiga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't even talked about the Amiga FPSs. Let's save those for another lifetime. Another <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it worked. The darkness and and kind of grit worked because um, it was a huge success. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, John Romero and Id coming up with the goods, mm. um, and it was really the proper bona fide birth of um, standalone LAN events. Mm-hmm. This actually gave birth to QuakeCon. QuakeCon, yes, <laughs> QuakeCon. Um, again, we've said that previously RTS games. Um, I don't know whether RTS games had yet had their kind of own cons. I think maybe they did. Um, it made sense because obviously RTS games being the way they were. Uh, but yeah, th- this was when the FPS multiplayer really went on the map for LAN parties and actually their own paid events, um, which is mad when you think about it. You know, people, sp- you know, companies sponsoring to have the yeah. have a computer game played at an event. Now we kind of don't think twice about it. I mean. What was it? I was watching the other day, just to go on a very quick aside. Um, I was I was actually sitting there watching a Rocket League tournament. Yeah, yeah, I've watched some of those. It's easy. hundreds of thousands oh, no. of dollars oh, on the line crazy, for yeah. playing football with cars on a. On a <laughs> Don't get me started on Rocket How League. How many of those players play with a keyboard and mouse? I want to know. <laughs> 
Uh, only I, Adrian. Only, <laughs> the only one who plays with a keyboard and mouse. I mean, honestly, but but you know, I'm I'm zeroing in on Rocket League, but of course, you know, there's there's yeah. there's loads. I mean, look at the Call of Duty events. Look at the Fortnite events. Look at mm. there's there's like a million bucks up for grabs. What is that for a game? It's madness. Anyway. Going back to where we were, we come to a bit of a turning point in the road um, because up until this point, it's not fair to say it, it. You know, it's fact that PC was the dominant platform. It was. Um, the, it was the bomb. It was the bomb to play FPS games. Yeah, mainly because of the hardware, as we've already mm. said. So the whole genre really um, was about to kind of have its doors blown off, um, and it was really by um, a console game. FPS. A perhaps. certain Jaguar game, even. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, we had to shoehorn it in there, Alien didn't we? Alien vs. Predator, right? <laughs> mm. We move on to 97, chaps. 1997. Oh. The first significant FPS title to be released on a console. It gave us superb design. We could use stealth. We could get headshots. We had four-way multiplayer. And we had position-dependent ah. hit reaction. Okay. Of course. The of game course. this game was so popular that it remained the biggest selling game in the United States for seven years. Seven years it remained. What am I talking do, about? Do, 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 do. Yeah, I like it. Of course I'm talking about Golden Eye yeah. <laughs> <at> sixty four. <laughs> Again, funnily enough, we've got a pod on we've this. We've covered yeah. it all. Um uh-huh. but it's but I mean what is there not to say about this that we haven't already said? I mean, quick roundup, guys. It's great. It, we, we all That's love it. it. <laughs> you know, it's great. I've interviewed Keith's like no, I not for me. That. That's why I always used to lose. Yeah. I always used to lose. I mean, used to never, oh, it was, it was rock hard when yeah. you had people who knew what they were yeah. doing. Yeah, never yeah. played with Ross. Never. No, played no. With Ross was oh, yeah, yeah. Ross was good. I remember. Absolutely, but no. I mean, N sixty four very much put on the map um, by Goldeneye. How long no, had it been yeah. out by then? What the N sixty four? Yeah, was that a year, or a year? Yeah, yeah. or so. Ninety six, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. so only a year into it, and it was already um, giving the PC a run for its money. Because I mean, it's, I, I still can't get you know seven years as a top seller. It's crazy, it sat at the top of the charts. That's it's mental. It's so accessible. You, you didn't need a thing that was worth oh, hundreds geez. of pounds. How much did you pick? Your N64 was well dirt cheap, wasn't it? Ninety nine pounds. Ninety nine. Yeah. With gold not included. Control, exactly. Control, one or two. I think I had. To, I only had one. I had to get extras. Oh, right. I had to buy extras. Controller ports ready for your four yeah. players. So cool. Bargain. PCs were expensive in those yeah, days, yeah, man. Like, only, yeah. only rich yeah, oh, yeah. kids had the proper ones. So. Yeah, I mean, I I had a. I didn't get a. I mean, I had the Amstrad. I had that for decades. Mm. Um, but I didn't get a. I don't think we got a home computer till about yeah ninety eight, ninety nine, mm. something like that. Not same. 90, yeah, yeah same. round round about mm. then. Um, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, it, I remember I remember playing. Um, I remember playing Goldeneye round somebody's house i don't think it was yours age i think it might have been ross's house actually ross yeah. had it rob had it on his rob had it in yeah probably Online. rich yeah, as well we I've, I've, i'm it sure on. it was ross's house because now you mention him being mm-hmm. so good at it i ross, seem to remember yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so he was always odd job <laughs> odd job <laughs> 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 always the headshots yeah. um but um yeah, I mean, we you know, we're hurtling towards the millennium now. Um, 98, that, this is just, I mean, we're going on to kind of just heavy hitters galore here. I mean, I, I've just, you know, n- apart from just listing them out, I'm, there's not much more I can do really. But 98 was another big year and actually saw um, a release of a very, very story-driven FPS game um, that was very different to most that had come before it. Which I would argue is the most important FPS game. There you go. If you haven't played it, firstly, where have you been? And secondly, go and get it on. Um, it has aliens. It's got a good selection of weapons. It's got good graphics. It's got a really good storyline. Um, what are you guys talking about? What are we talking about? Adrian. Half-Life. <laughs> <laughs> of course we're talking about Half-Life. Um, by who? Who created Valve. Valve. Um, the bit that gets me on that is the, you know, they used to use that, the picture with the guy with the valve in his yeah, head. I, I was always like slightly disturbed <laughs> yeah. by that. Tell like, her what's the matrix. Like I was Mr. like, I've let some steam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you haven't played it, get hold of it somehow really and have a go. <clears throat> I actually is... started playing the, um, the add-ons, the DLCs for it, like Blue Shift and all that. Like, they had a few extensions. They already played them before they, they played the originals. They're pretty good. It still holds mm. up. The graphics are old now, aren't they? But they're still, still good games within the Half-Life old universe. Mm. Love it. Yeah, it's it's. I remember. I think I may have borrowed it from you at one time, and I was like, 
I kind of had to I kind of had to rework like how I thought about games because I hadn't played anything like sto- properly story driven before certainly not like an FPS yes. and um because most of them were a bit thin on the ground with plot let's be honest mm-hmm. you know you had a bit of a kind of a narrative but it wasn't you know whereas in that one you had to talk to people interact with units and people and make certain things happen and revisit areas and stuff yeah npcs and, and all that knocking yeah, about. some of it was yeah. rock hard as well like when you had the, the mercenaries outside on the helipad or whatever like firing at you i mean that was rough it was a hard game that was quite hard but nevertheless a really good game um and some of the aliens were nuts as well <laughs> Um, but yeah, so despite the runaway success of, of um, GoldenEye on the N64, which we just talked about, the PC platform was still pumping out all the all the big titles, and there was a there was beginning to be a little bit of a war rumbling between console and and PC. Mm. Um, although it w- that wouldn't really get going until the noughties. Um But Half Life featured a, a really immersive, in depth story driven experience for the and the players not seen that before. Universally praised. Um, for its attention to detail and the selection of weapons. GameSpot has it down as one of the greatest games of all time. Mm-hmm. Not just the greatest FPS, one of the greatest yeah. games of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Whether you agree with that, you know, jury's yeah. out, but I think you'll get some people saying, you know, agree. Um, but as we close out the 20th century, um, there were several more titles that, that kind of expanded on the graphics and speed. Um, and as we talked about in the multiplayer pod, <clears throat> the, the the thirst for kind of playing multi person lobbies online was just growing and growing and growing. That's kind of all people wanted to be fair. Um and more and more games geared their setups and gameplay to essentially that. Um mm-hmm. and that's where the money was going. There was a game actually that probably gets overlooked quite a bit, um, called Star Siege Tribes. Anyone heard of that? No. Ah. It was released in ninety nine, um, and it allowed up to thirty two players to complete in a compete in a single match. And also featured team-based gameplay as well. So took what was already kind of out there, but really hammered home the the multiplayer. And it was only multiplayer, uh, online death matches and team games and stuff like that. Um, so quite, but it gets overlooked quite a lot, mainly because you then had Quake Three and you had Unreal Tournament released in the same mm-hmm. year. Um, which you know just obliterated everything in yeah. its path. Unreal um, Tournament is a great game. I'm ready. So yeah, much fun I mean, Qu- QuakeCon grew yeah. um, with Quake 3 Arena, which was that one. And then Epic came along with Unreal Tournament. Again, geared massively towards the deathmatch modes, capture the flag, the, that kind the of The vehicles. That, I thought, well, this is great. Actually, just driving around in the different vehicles and stuff. Which so was cool. another new thing yeah. that hadn't been seen before. There's Certainly a little bit in Half-Life. No, that's Half-Life 2, my apologies. But yeah, there's little bits here and there, but nothing proper like that. So no, good. and, and it, it was really taken some big steps forward. But this allowed huge lobbies of players uh, to compete in varying online deathmatch and sort of capture the flag style modes, um, which are now featured, which are still featured in, um, you know, uh, online uh, deathmatch and things like that today. If you go on a, you know, you go on an FPS game today, you'll see capture the flag, you'll see deathmatch, you'll see, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. all of those other modes and and things on there. So, um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much the thread that's carried on till today. I've also got a mention for Counter Strike. I have to mention Counter Strike mm, um, yes. from '99. Yes. Uh, pretty much, I don't think initially, and again, I can't find a definitive answer on this. I don't think it was meant or 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 was kind of seen to bit, go very far. I don't think they had great aspirations for it. Mm. Um, and it just, it blew everything apart. There was, yeah, at any one time, check this out, on it, at any one time on the Counter-Strike servers, you had 90,000 players. Oof, that's just mental, isn't it? I, at any one yeah. time. You wouldn't struggle to get into a lobby, put it that way. I'm not really a huge fan of online multiplayer FPS games, but Counter-Strike was the exception for me, one of the exceptions. I put many hours into it. I remember playing yeah. that on your house when you had it linked up to the internet. It's cool. It? Yeah, I was me, like, wow, me too. how is it even doing this? Oh, this I know, is crazy. Right. And, but you, if you want to get good at Counter-Strike, you have to devote your life to it. Because okay, we just get a kid, oh, spawn, I'm dead. Yeah. Ah, uh, spawn, you got to duck, you got to do headshots, if, and you got to, it's so many little strategies and tactics. Spawn and dead. Spawn and dead. Dylan, Dylan wasn't very good at it. But then there's... Oh, it's not. <laughs> not. Not for that one evening I played it at your house, yeah. But then there's, there's you, you could probably say that about most modern FPS as well. Yeah. Um, and and I'll I'll come on to that in the the sort of modern section, but um, we we sort of come to I mean ninety thousand you know at any one time, mm. and that was and that apparently was a was a, was a kind of an average, you know, mm. pff, that's a lot of players, that's a huge amount of players. It'd be interesting. I don't know whether there's any uh, numbers for kind of modern FPS games, but that's got to be up there. If if you know, 
So, <clears throat> kingpin story. I want to hear my kingpin story. Ah, oh, kingpin indeed. I do mention it sort of further down, but actually, I, yeah. So I remember because, like you say, you didn't you used to play a lot of FPS games, and when you used to come around your house, you, you'd have sort of varying different titles on the go, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I remember definitely playing like Resident Evils and um, and kind of platformers. Yeah, and yeah. You had a different genres. A, yeah, there was like a, a strategy game that was like Natural Selection. I remember that one. Do you remember that game? That's an FPS game, really. But with it strategy. was kind of a, it was kind of yeah. a management game though as well because you had to like so build good. things and stuff but <clears throat> you had all sorts of games but kingpin you had on the go one day and i think mike was playing it so bad i think mike was well, playing it's a good it. game it's interesting Have you heard about this game <sighs> nope. it's very interesting but it was it was it's essentially um it's pretty rough i mean mafia kind of mob yeah dark dirty kind of don't you start Payne out look. as a yeah it's like a like a like a bum or something or a thief or whatever and you have to don't you have to like work your way up by like killing people yeah. and getting money I think you have to become a kingpin like a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you have to do various things like nick cars and shoot people and it was pretty rough it was pretty you know gory and gritty um, but I just remember it because again it was one of those dark like but quite realistic games and it used a more, like quite a cinematic um, sort of view didn't it the imagery was quite sort of cinematic I was like yeah. this looks a bit like, I, know. I want to say late 90s uh, Early two thousand. Kingpin, the, I think. Was are you talking about what's different about the game, or the kind King, of Kingpin was ninety nine? Ninety nine. There you go. It is, but it, why it stood out and why it caused controversy is you could shoot off different limbs. Very so, a hand you could shoot off yes, the arms, like positional shooting. So if you yeah. shoot the foot, it will fly off. So it's actually, you, I don't think it ever really happened before in FPS games. Um, if you got a headshot, well, maybe. But that's that's. I think I think that you had you had the likes of like Hexen and yeah. Heretic, and then you had Quake. But I think that it was like a set kind of like the body would kind of um, there'd be like four parts it would go into, and then you could shoot the leg further if you want to. It's disgusting. Yeah. It caused a lot of controversy that game. Yeah, so there would be that. Well, yeah, exactly. It was mm. more detailed, but I think there was only it went into like a few parts. Whereas yeah. in Kingpin, it was literally like fifty pieces you could shoot it into. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was <clears throat> it was pretty gory. I seem to remember. It, I don't know. I quite enjoyed it though at the time. Dark and gloomy, but yeah, it's a good game. I quite enjoyed playing it. Um, the final hurrah for the 20th century, um, and indirectly actually for the FPS genre, funnily enough, but it leads on to something really quite important, um, was at E3 in 1999. Uh, E3, for those not in the know, most people should be in the know. What's E3, chaps? Big game show. The biggest, like, yeah. electronic. Expo, yeah. Video massive, gaming massive expo, yeah. gaming kind of collection of kind of devs and companies, etc. Um, but they showcased uh, at E3 a real-time strategy game called Halo CE, which you probably wouldn't have heard of. Um, the following year, the same game had been overhauled into a third-person shooter. So um, Halo, as we know it now, obviously, those may know, may not know, um, it started out as a yeah a pretty lowly uh, real time strategy game that didn't get any traction whatsoever. It then got overhauled into a third person shooter, which didn't get any traction whatsoever. <laughs> so it had three bites of the damn cherry, yeah. Um, but both, as I said, both didn't get a huge amount of attention. Uh, Microsoft then decided they were just going to buy a company and went, okay, we'll buy Bungie, who created these Halo games. Mm-hmm. And they went, yeah, don't like it. And they said, I'm not going to, no, don't want RTS. And I don't want a third person shooter. We want a first person shooter. Um, mm-hmm. And they thought Halo's a good name. We'll take that and we'll, we'll create a, uh, a first person shooter. And what we'll do is we'll go one better. We'll throw it in the box with a brand new Xbox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was a stroke of genius uh, mm-hmm. because it was a massive, massive success. Halo um, is considered one of the absolute pinnacles of FPS um, of any of any age, indubitably. Um, yes, <laughs> I I had kind of mixed feelings about Halo. Um, I came into it on the second one. I didn't play the first one, funnily enough, mm. um, and then I went back to the first one and then kind of saw what all the hype was about, and. Um, it, but the thing is with the, the thing is with a lot of people it is just like they they see it as their mecca of fps mm. games and rightly so you it's know. definitely one of my favorite fps games or halo 2 i guess and even halo 1 is all right I, I i think you'll find if you yeah if we did a poll you would you'd get halo 2 as being the runaway kind of success yeah. Uh, yeah, I, really, it's I, amazing. Most yeah, people, Halo oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you agree. I was going, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, because a- any time I speak to anyone about that kind of those games, and oh, Halo Two, oh mm. god, I remember like you know playing multiplayer, all this mm-hmm. and, you know, online, mm-hmm. um, and again because it had so many vehicles 
you could do various different, you know, shooting positions. There was like massive spacecraft, aliens. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, I remember some of the lobbies I were in. It was mental. Mm-hmm. You'd be playing with like God knows how many other players. Like the sticky grenades. And there's just so much to love about Halo. Too. Driving around in a warthog, just yeah. with the minigun on the yeah, back and like so oh, trying to take down this giant building sized mm. alien. Yeah, it was it was really, really good fun. Um but that obviously paved the way for the sequels of, of the Halo franchise. Um and actually, oddly enough, they came back to the RTS genre some years later with Halo Wars. Halo Wars, yes, yeah. yes. Full circle. Yeah, yeah we, we don't like it. And then, no. oh, we do like it. Mm. So, um, one thing I've neglected to mention that I'm going to throw in, because there will be some handheld fanatics out there going, well, there's some FPS on handheld, you know. Mm. And you're right. There were. There were. Um, 2001, uh, handheld market gave us a title for the Game Boy Advance. And it was a specific Game Boy Advance game only FPS called Backtrack. Um, nah. No, no idea. No, nope, no idea. Doom was not long after that released on the Game Boy Advance mm-hmm. as well. Not, not about yep. port actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, it's pretty good with port. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good port. Yeah. Not, not everyone's you know those those games. Not everyone's cup of tea. Obviously, most people were playing those you know that on PC. Mm. Not many people probably has heard of backtrack because it was a gba only release mm-hmm. um i've no doubt there'll be some game boy advance you know pages on on insta that we follow that will say yeah we remember that <laughs> um but yeah d- you know due to the the kind of small screen size it was a bit challenging mm-hmm. to play them obviously a bigger screen is better and with pcs you can have larger monitors etc etc um but they were praised in fact for those types of games for pushing the hardware to its limit while actually maintaining a decent gameplay, which I think, to be fair, more credit to them, you know, because it could have been a disaster. It could have been Adrian playing on his monitor with his little little window, you know, his little, like old days. His little graphic window. So the years after we went crashing into the millennium, uh, loads more advances in graphics, story-driven gameplay, multiplayer options. They were just coming thick and fast. Um, games continued to draw in the masses, and we had lots of very lucrative franchises that began to sort of pop their heads out of the sand. Uh, one such, which was in 2001, called World War II Online. This was prior call, you know, pre Call of Duty, etc. This was pretty big. This was again an online multiplayer game set, as you would imagine, in World War II, which at the time hadn't kind of been done yet. No. Um, so, which which is why it kind of struck a chord. Mm. Very popular at the time, but again, was probably you know the controllers were probably put down shortly after that because of so many other big games being released battlefield 1942 mm-hmm. in 2002 the battlefield series as i'm sure most or if not everybody knows now um very very impressive and they and the um first call of duty game was way back in 2004 mm. believe it or not a lot of people you know consider certainly sort of i'd say dare i say it, younger gamers would would say that oh call of duty was, you know was that in 2010 or 2000 mm-hmm. nope the first call of duty game was in fact 2004 um mm-hmm. There was also, excuse me, there was also a, um, I've got to give a nod to one of the earlier uh, Call of Duty style. And I say Call of Duty style, this is the original Call of Duty, so the the, mm. the World War kind of games rather than what we see now. Um, anyone remember Medal of Honor? Oh, I, was gonna, I was hoping you would say that. Yeah. 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 Medal of Honor games, I had loads of those. Oh, Great story. And um, yeah, the yeah. Uh, Frontline was my favourite. Medal of Honor yeah. Frontline. I yeah. had D-Day the PC ones yeah. with the with the two expansion packs on it, and that was yeah, so man, impressive. Played, yeah. It was. I played as Medal I of Honor. I played games. it on PS2, and it was yeah. Just- that was so. I remember. I remember getting that. I think. I think. I think Carolyn actually bought it for my birthday or something when we first started going out, and I was like, "What's this?" Yeah. I mean, just just mm. g- just give us a flavour of the beach. Well, it's like mm. you've seen Saving Private Ryan, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like that. playing that. It was fantastic. But with more success. Yes. <laughs> I left the beach with all four limbs. Was, <laughs> Lucky you. I was doing well. Some of them didn't in the game. No. But yeah, it's, oh, it's it, great. It, the sound, the, mm. you know. It was the, really immersive. Oh, it, and yeah. hiding behind the porcupines on the beach. Yeah. And and like people running up the beach and all the mm. bullets like coming off the sand. Yeah. And, yeah. So good. So atmospheric. It, oh, it, that, was a, that was a real first. That was yeah. a real first. Um but I had to mention, yeah, I had to mention the, the Medal of Honor um, franchise mm-hmm. as well. And also because the story was pretty good. Um, yeah. You know, the way you had to, like, show your papers. Yeah, you show me your papers. for, like, the OSS or something, wasn't it? Like, That's Secret it. Service. And, That's yeah. it. And through the um, streets of France, like, you know. That's what was so good on Streets of France. But yeah. then there's later missions where you're in Holland. Yeah. And, like, Operation Market Nine, Garden. Yeah, the yeah. Nijmegen Bridge and all that stuff. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, it's, it, that is a, that is, I, I couldn't not mention it. I couldn't not mention it. Um, 
But um, it's also worth noting, um, we talk about story driven. And again, another pod drop in there. We talk about Bioshock. Uh, Woo! Uh, <coughs> Great yes. game. Um, story driven, massively immersive campaign. Yeah. Um, I mean, hop over to the, the old website and have a, uh, have a, have a listen to the, the Bioshock pod. Cause that's, I really enjoyed that one. And, 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 and oh, don't <laughs> worry. I've got an and. It's oh, a huge, got two and. ands. It's in bold. And who did we interview? Well, we had, well, well two. A, two. We can't forget one of them. That's not Paul, fair. Paul Helquist. Yeah. Very great. Great yep. guy. Great insights to the Bioshock. And, Mr. and, and, Mr. Levine himself, Mr. Ken, Ken Levine. Levine. Um, I mean, that's as pretty much of uh, as much of an insight as you're ever going to need into a game. Mm-hmm. Interviewing two of the lead guys and the fact that we've done a, a deep dive mm-hmm. yep. into the game as well. So I think Age, you hosted that one, didn't you as well? Um, Keith's kind of co. We co did, didn't we? I was co-host. Yeah. Oh, even better. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but yeah, re- really enjoyed that. And it's again another one of those, um, you know can we say landmark i mean it wasn't you know yeah it, it, yeah you can yeah can we mm. keith says so so Again, it is keith says so the, it must be. i say so in terms of the story and the world building and everything it was oh i thought for an fps it was on an on a, on a new level impressive really. to a level yeah. probably not seen before so yeah fair enough uh, but that brings us nicely to to sort of um what walking through the rest of the noughties really um and the vast majority of fps games these days are either unfortunately sequels to existing games and franchises. Half Life Two, though. Yeah, well, you are coming yeah. to that, aren't you? Half Life Two. Well, I was going to let you kind of jump in on that because you mentioned it, but I thought you were going to run with it. But yeah, right, get, yeah sorry. well, while we're on it, then go on. Then what, oh, yeah, where, half- where did where did Half Life Two kind of you know fit for you in terms of really good? And to be honest, by this time, two thousand and six, I want to say Half Life Two. Am I wrong? I think right. it's uh, oh six. Oh, I, I think don't know. Right, yeah. But my point is, I was falling out of love with FPS games by this time. I kind of lost my love of Counter Strike and me. <laughs> But Half Life Two was my final. I've had some great fun since with Bioshock and stuff. But Half Life Two was my big kind of swung song, my kind of finishing note of FPS games for me. And I I done all the add on packs as well, the different episodes. Just a brilliant game. Mm-hmm. It, it, it took everything that's good about Half Life One, took the latest technology, latest um, ideas, and took it forward. So brilliant game, even better than the first one in my opinion. Well, I mean, what what I I mean, I've read a couple of sort of different opinions on the whole. Praised massively for for again great story, great graphics, guns, etc. Aliens. There's some people that say that they don't think it was as good as the first one, um, and that it maybe didn't do as well, you know, for a whole host of reasons. But yeah, I, I, it's difficult to say really because it's it is a I've played it as well. It's a good game. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a great it's a great sequel. Because let's face it, there are some pretty awful sequels out there. Yeah. Corridor Eight, for example. Yeah. Sure. Corridor Eight. Yeah. Corridor Eight. <laughs> was it development? Apparently, I looked up. <laughs> we have to follow that one up. We have to follow that one up. Um, so, where are we then? So, I mean, yeah, sequels to existing games, um, or you've got standalone games that actually just essentially plagiarize the you know the engines and the graphics used from other things yeah. so they look too similar mm. and they feel too similar and that's a problem because you're not really playing a new game um you're, you're playing something that's very similar to what's already out there so that's not to say there aren't any great titles out there um i'm going to drop a few couple of names in and i mean this will only be um to certain people obviously that played it but titanfall in 2014 anyone know of titanfall i know of it yeah i had I've a little titanfall go of it too on my ps plus mm. account and people have raved about a good the single player campaign so is. underrated I still haven't played it it but... didn't get a massive release it didn't no. get a lot of press coverage and it didn't even get a lot of pushing in like the the the, the relative stores you mm. know the ps plus store and the, and the microsoft store it really didn't get a lot the initial titanfall game it is so polished and yeah. so good fun as well and there's so much to it um and for those of you that don't know if you want to give it a try it's essentially you you are how can i put it it's a very polished and sensibly balanced call of duty with mechs Mm. so you can then you can you can essentially deploy your mech jump in it tune the weapons fire the weapons and you can get out and in at any time so it's very very kind of free roaming uh freelance type gaming um it it's great. I, I mean, I played the first one. Um, really good campaign as well. Very good campaign and a very good online mm-hmm. multiplayer server. Um, people are still playing in their droves now, one and two online. So if you want to get on and have a look online and get involved, and you can actually, and I thought this was was really quite surprising because I played this with um, uh, Steve originally, um, and we were like, oh, we're just going to get hammered. You know, we'll go on. We're just. Gonna... It was actually quite. It the skill based matchmaking is very clever. 
um, and you go on and you're quite competitive from your first match. You know, oh. I mean, if you if you know how to play an FPS, you know, and you can get under the controls, you're actually quite competitive. You don't just get absolutely blown away by some of the other, you like know, like Counter Strike with Dylan. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. Uh. Um, there's also I've got to give a mention because this is such a weird, funky game. Super Hot from 2016. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, best, just very best quickly, played in VR. That is, yeah, it's amazing. Just very quickly, what's the what? Why is it so different? So it's almost like the, it's almost like bullet time. So when people fire at you, if you don't move, the bullets don't move, or they don't move in an incredibly slow mm-hmm. pace. But when you move, they start to speed up. But if you move slowly, they move slowly, and you can see the trail of the bullets wow. as they're coming towards mm-hmm. you. And you have yeah, so it's you have to choose the right sequence the, to do stuff, don't you? And make it, sure yeah. that you aim properly. Yeah, when yeah, you yeah. shoot. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, it, it, it's a, it's a, yeah, a it loved game. game first, wasn't it? But yeah. playing it in VR is really, and when, when you do learn the order and stuff, you feel so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dodging the bullets. Are you like throwing I am the guns, Neo. Throwing the guns, yeah, grab the other gun. Yeah. Oosh, grab that gun. It Boom. It's got, yeah. it's got ninja stars in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, they cut, it's not, it's not people per se, is it? No, it's kind like of polygonal red. type. It's almost sh- like they made a glass glass because well they shatter when you. Yeah. So it's not it's not violent per se, is it? It's not no, not not as a classic not FPS game would be. People, but, but yeah, and it's, it's the world is really cool. It's all white. Yeah. And so the red bullets very crisp. Really stand out. It's really good fun, and mm. if you can play it in VR, you must try it. It's Super. So cool. 2016. 2016. Wow. Yeah. It's seven years old already. <laughs> But yeah, if you're not familiar, I mean, you know, I know there's loads and loads of others that, I mean, I've got some more I'm going to mention just very quickly in a list here, but there's loads and loads of others <clears throat> that, um, you know, I'm sure people absolutely love or love to hate and whatever. But yeah, you know, if, if, if you want to shout us on the socials, do so. Um, but that, that kind of covers the main sort of whistle stop tour of where it came from, where it went to. Maze War to, you know, PUBG to, to Redneck Rampage. Redneck and- Rampage. <laughs> um, but I did want to mention a few titles, you know, through the ages that, mm. that didn't get a shout earlier, um, just to satisfy a few more appetites out there. We had actually the Terminator in 1990. Anyone know that one? Um, in 1990? I don't know. Yeah. No, I played Skynet, but that's that's different, isn't it? It was a very basic, very basic uh, Terminator game in 1990. Mm. Uh, Xenomorph, 1991. Heard of it. Yeah. Robocop 3D, 1992. Well, that's a great game yeah, in the I've Amiga. I've played it, but it's really impressive looking, isn't it? Really cool yeah. game. Uh, yeah. Space Hulk in 1993. Yes. I had Space Hulk. I that had, did not run great on my I Amiga. I had it on the Sun. <laughs> it was quite thirsty. Yeah. Mm, it was hard. You had it on the Sun. Yeah, yeah, it was rock hard. hard. Yeah, because it was, it was tactical as well. Because yeah, you had, I think, game. three or four... Uh, you had the Hulk guy. You had yeah, three or four of the Hulk guys. It was different to normal. Yeah, I don't know. That was tough. Alien Trilogy, 1996. Do you remember Corporation? Yes. On the Mega Drive. I was that on the Amiga as well? I don't it? know, but I only had the... It was only on the Mega Drive. That, that was first. It looked like Blanca's face, didn't it, on the cover? Like green yeah, monster. like a green You monster. did not know you what you were doing. You were like, bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah, Corporation or Cyberconf, wasn't it? I have it. I have it. And you're like, boop, boop. Am I doing anything? Boop, boop, boop. Nothing's happening. Oh, I'm dead. Something just killed me. That's one great. from those days. Okay, mister, I'm no good at video games. Alien Trilogy. I'm terrible at video games. Shut up. Stop talking. <laughs> Alien Trilogy, brilliant. Alien yeah. Trilogy had that in the sun. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. Terminator Future Shock in 1996. No, That's that know. might be what I'm talking I'll about. This, the the PC shooter. Yeah, I'm. I mm. remember this one vividly because I I bought this over in the US. Actually, I went oh. over. I was over there. We were seeing um, some family friends for for a holiday, and um, I went to I went to like a computer shop or whatever, and I said to the guy in there, "I've got this PC. Like, will it run, etc.?" Because console stuff, no. PC stuff, yes. As long as it's IBM compatible, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I bought a couple of games, like dirt cheap, like versus over in the UK. I was like, this is wicked. And I bought Terminator Future Shock. I played that to death. It was yeah. so hard. Yeah. It I was so that. difficult. Like, and, and the, you, there were so many like gaps you had to jump over and like stairs and things like that. And if you yeah. fell, you were done, you know. So I, yeah, it was rock hard, but I really liked it. Rednet Rampage 97. Yeah, it's a fun game. Which was mental. And it has a great soundtrack by yeah. a guy called Mojo Nixon, who is slightly unhinged. Um, <laughs> well, 96, 97. Yeah. Um, Power Slave or Exhumed, as it was known. Exhumed, yeah. Exhumed, Exhumed, yes. That was on, that came out on everything, I think. They put it on the Switch now, haven't they? Have they? It's Exhumed, I think you can get like a remastered version that's really cool Switch. again Ooh. i had just because that's the console i had at the time i had mm-hmm. it on the saturn it's ancient egyptian themed 
and that was really cool because yes. it had lots of backtracking and exploration. Jeez. So you'd have to unlock certain things or find things, and then you would go back to different levels to get to because you'd be able to you'd have powers that would enable you to get to different areas and stuff like that. It's funny. It's funny you say that actually because I've I, I I'm pretty sure I mentioned this during the Amstrad. Uh, pod but now it, it's ringing a bell again and i cannot remember the name of it but there was one very similar to that that was on the amstrad in i think the l- might have been late 80s maybe 1990 or something like that <clears throat> and it was specifically like an egyptian themed you you had to go into pyramids yeah that's what this is um i don't know whether it is i don't know whether it, was ex- it might have been exhumed um but i can't remember but it was yeah it, it was quite cool actually it was quite a cool game a bit janky as you can imagine yeah but, yeah um I think yeah, I seem to remember that it may have been exhumed actually okay. on the, the four. No, this on the on the but Saturn it would uh, look, that would have been a better looked, version it looked, probably. It looked excellent and the lighting and stuff, and it was made by a company called Lobotomy Software, and they were the company that ported Duke Nukem 3D and Quake to the Saturn. As Does well. it? Did you start out they with like a plane? Well. Was there a plane there, and you'd landed in a plane, and you had to Possibly. go and explore? Possibly. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, we have to look that one up because that's ringing all sorts of bells. It's, that's um, a great. That's a great one. Adrian Turok, 1997. Turok. Whoop whoop. Yeah. More interviews. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll be honest, it's not my favourite FPS games, but I've they're, they're N64, aren't they? They're yeah. playable. They're fun. I never really got to full grips with it because it's quite tough, actually. But yeah, I have interviewed it's a tricky. couple of fellas that made the works on Torok games. Torok? Torok? Uh, they made Walker as well. So interesting pathway to, the, mm-hmm. to those games. But oh, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. And they also made the FPS South Park game as well on the N64. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, just a note that. on Power Slave Exhumed. Yeah. It's on everything. It's not just hey. on the Switch. They're basically, that remastered version is on everything. Oh, so excellent. go and enjoy it. Go, go play enjoy it. Nice. Go have a go. Uh, we mentioned Kingpin Life of Crime 1999, and there was a, there's a bunch of other stuff that you know we may or may not have mentioned. Is there any other names that's coming to mind that you want to throw out? Mm. Let's what? see. Let's see. Uh, are we spoken enough about Alien vs. Predator? Oh, we have barely mentioned it. It's a different sort of FPS game. It was, it was a, it's a good game, you know. It's more of a survival... L- you can't just go guns are blazing. No. Mm-hmm. So it's clever. Unless you're the... Unless you're the, the predator, I think. No, no, the shooty guy. Space Marine. Yeah. I was more, more gung-ho with that guy. You were than more the, gung-ho. But it's just... You find ammo and stuff. Yeah, and, it's tough. Yeah. Tough game, actually. But clever game. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's good well, like it Alien Trilogy is great. Yep. Um, yes. yep. Just like See, I found I found Alien Trilogy boring because obviously oh, there's a lot of time that you just like wander around with virtual. nothing it going on. But I'm fact, like, I like to be entertained. Okay. As you know, it's very atmospheric though. It does it nail is quite that atmosphere. It does. Yeah, I know when the, one of the uh, face huggers or something comes <laughs> out of the, <laughs> out of the like you've got the scanner and it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> it was a bit like that. It did nail um, the atmosphere, but I know what you mean. It can't. Let's touch on the the brief attempt to make FPS games on the Amiga. I'm guessing please do no, please do. Yep. No. So being a man with only Amiga and no means to actually get a PC, there was this clamour that was like, oh yeah, we got to try and get this stuff on Amiga. But the problem is with stuff like Gloom and there was something called there was, Fears. And there was also Alien Breed 3D. Alien Breed 3D. Power so assault. I had all of them, right? But I had to, again, play them on a postage stamp because it was you basically like a, an unexpanded A1200, which was like one of the big, you know, the ones towards the top, the top end of the range, um, wouldn't play them. But see, only now can I enjoy them properly. I was like, oh, yeah, I can play Fears. Well, you've like, got glasses speed. now. So can... <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is gonna... Alien Breed 3D is going to be so good. They are rubbish. They are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> even even if you'd be like, if you had a bumped up Amiga in those days, expecting something like Doom, you'd be so disappointed. Mm. They are so bad. Breathless, I think there was another one. But yeah, thanks a lot for that. Anyway, thanks for trying to get us <laughs> FPSs on Amiga. Well, they tried. These people really did try. They really but wanted but there you it go. Wasn't, wasn't po- it wasn't it's right worth there. popping in there as well. And I didn't give it its own dedicated section because I... It, it it doesn't control the same as an FPS, but technically the viewpoint is an FPS, and it was obviously light gun games. Mm, yeah. Yes. The likes of Time Crisis, mm, you know, Virtua Cop, all that sort of stuff, which we all know and love. Think, um, are we going to do that? Are we going to do that before we finish? We've talked are about we talking light, light gun? gun? Shall I leave it well alone? Leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> we, we, we well, we I purposely left about, it alone because, because it is about, like, it's a light gun game. Mm. It's I don't think in the... You know, it's not referred to as a first-person shooter yeah. in the typical sense of the way you control it. Um, but you could argue either way, mm. I suppose. I think regarding light gun games, we'll wait a little bit longer to get to the bottom of We've got to the get matter. to the bottom of the matter. <laughs> so, to round things off, chaps, I'm going to give you the biggest sellers of all time. 
Woo-hoo. in the FPS category. And I would like you to give me some numbers, please. Three. In <laughs> Yes! <laughs> you number. win! <laughs> Have another freeway cola. Um, <laughs> if I'm doing top five, so fifth place. Other colas are available, sorry. They are. But are, are more expensive. <laughs> in fifth place, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 right. from 2011. Right. What do we have in terms of unit sales? 60 million. 16. Oh, that's quite good. Did you say 16 or 60? 16. 16? No, I said 60, but no one says 16. He said 60. Oh, 16. No one says oh. 16. Okay, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take 16. Yeah. Um, Modern Warfare 3. I'll go 28. Ooh, 28 deal. 16, 28 mil. Say, say 60 just for fun. <laughs> he's not he's not he's not he's not gonna play the game. T- no, is he gonna play the game? I'm not no. I'll tell you. 26 and a half million. What? Yeah? 26 and a half million. <laughs> well done, Kifo. Right, this right, Sorry, position everyone, four. everyone everyone deafened by me going, <laughs> what? what? Position four. This is this talk about curveball. Um and it is a light gun game. Ooh, oh James, no way. Duck Hunt from 1984. Oh, what? what? Are you no. going to... Are you enjoying... Well, are you... Because it came with the NES console, didn't it? Are you... So you're including bundles. Oh, God. Here we go. That's the whole That's way more than 26, isn't it? Uh, no. No? no? Nope. Eh, 27. 28. <laughs> <laughs> 28 mil. Um, third place, another Call of Duty, but, but 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare. 30 million. Wow. Number two, Overwatch from 2016. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, people love Overwatch. Yeah, I, I played it a bit. I, I Never know. played it. Mm. Don't even know anyone that plays it, but apparently there is some kind of massive community that plays yeah. this game. Millions, mate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, and the rest, yeah. No. So if, COD's, if COD in 2019 is 30 mil, Overwatch in 2016, 35 million. And number one, anyone want to guess what the number one online first person shooter game is online and th- again again this is it's it's partly a cop out actually on this list um i got this list from from somewhere on on the internet and it's i'll tell Fort, you why Fortnite, in a minute. that's why no no that's third person that's, right. that's right, exclusively right. third person my yeah. bad is it another free to play one yeah is it apex legends nope it's not PUBG, is it? It's PUBG. Yes, it is. It's PUBG. Oh, I thought that was third person. Nah. PUBG's, PUBG's free to play, isn't it? It is free to play, and you can, and it is actually, it comes with a full full FPS ver- oh, uh, version. Was, you can I play the game in either. So, like enough. I say, it's a bit of a cop out because yeah. it's got two options. So you can play the game as first person, or you can play the okay. game. And and yeah. the and the the difference is that if you lock into one of those lobbies, you stay in that view. Yeah, so I would you think can't. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, you can't, can't just. Between. No, exactly. It's a different kind of aiming. Yeah. 2017, which has sold upwards of and continues to grow upwards of 75 million units. But that's it. A lot of people have just got the free version. That's it. Not installed it or whatever. But but there's an awful lot of um, off the back of that as well, because I knew you'd say, oh, because it's free to play. It's free. It's free to play. (laughs) Um, It's actually one of the most spent on games as well in terms of um, add-ons, transactions, etc., etc. So, oh, I'm not doubting it makes money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, oh, it makes money oh, hand over it fist. Makes money. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, you know, the, I, I, I think there's always, there's always room. I like a modern FPS. You know, the only problem with modern FPS games that I find is that you kind of have to play them from day one, and you have to kind of get good at them. Mm-hmm. You, there is no, there's no way you can play it with other people and not just get absolutely owned if you haven't spent hours. This on is it, it right? And, the, and that's the problem for for guys. The like glory us. days yeah. of the solo player are gone, right? But or... but 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 you know, we've still got we've got all these releases. You know, Goldeneye had a massive um, success relaunch uh, or, yeah, for, yeah, on Xbox Switch, and various online. other platforms. Mm-hmm. That Very was good. I played it actually. Yeah, I've, I've got it in my membership. It's it's good, you know. They've they've the graphics are a bit smooth. It's not a huge huge reimagining, but it's good. It's well done. Mm-hmm. I, I think um, they've done the right thing with it, though. I, I just yeah. found it hard to play without the proper N64 controller. <laughs> like, why is my gun shooting up here? <laughs> <laughs> but it's things like that. You know, why have they re-released something like that? You know, and why is it done well? That tells you that there's yeah. still the I mean, market. As, as you know, I've never I, I never played. FPS games online because I suck at FPS games yeah. but I do enjoy story driven ones so over the years there's been a lot yeah. we haven't mentioned it I really like Killzone Killzone yeah great um, game Time Splitters 
Time Splitters 2. Black. I forgot oh, to there's loads of good ones. Yeah, yeah. there's some really... Like some I quirky, said, the list is endless. There's some really quirky ones from that time as well. There was one on the PS2. It was on PC as well. It was called The Operative, No One Lives Forever, uh-huh. which is a, like a 60s set one. And he plays this female spy. Mm. And it's, so it's, always, it's got a very like Austin Powers look to it. Mm. Um and you carry out lots of like spy missions and stuff, and it's actually got stealth elements in it as well. It's really cool, and you could probably pick it up for pennies. Yeah, now. there's, there's, I mean, perfect um, dark. I keep going. Oh, perfect, perfect dark. dark. Yeah, yeah nice. perfect dark. I mean, there's Dirt X as well. Do you remember Dirt X from the PC? Yeah, remember that one. Um, again, another massive step forward in graphics and yeah. gameplay and stuff like that. Um, there's, there's like, Syndicate started out actually as a, as an FPS, and then went to Syndicate Wars later on, which was a um, RTS. Did, it? Syndicate? Did Syndicate ever have a first person? There was a game? version of. Possibly not the if, not I don't, the Amiga syndicate. Amiga syndicate no. syndicate is just a there key, was key, sorry key, there key was an FPS one. shoot game later wasn't there yeah. yeah I think they might have done one but I think yeah, it was one. poorly received yeah it wasn't it was in go back to doing what you do best guys. but <laughs> but it just gives you another another strand to yeah. that whole you know a lot of those games either started out as platformers or mm. you know went back to being strategy games or whatever but yeah there's there's so many I mean I'm gonna get shouted at you know from people like, you yeah. didn't mention I, I, this I, game I've like you know a couple of the the first, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Because they remastered them, didn't they? Not they did. I've replayed them. They're amazing. The single player campaigns. I've never played them online. The single player campaigns are so immersive. The it's stories, like when you're storming these the big government buildings and you're oh. out in the, and it's just like, the, the mission in Pripyat as well. Oh. In, it, that, it's fantastic. 50,000 so people used to live here. Yeah. And you're doing it in the ghillie suit. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Mm. But yeah, so chaps, whistle stop. Whistle stop. We've had a, we've mentioned quite a, probably quite a few couple of hundred titles there, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. um, you know, there's loads more to talk about. There's loads more obviously out there, but we've, we've looked at kind of where it came from and the fact that Maze War with its little funny green Maze lines War. and, you know, clanky bits and pieces actually grew into other things like Battlezone, which was amazing, mm. grew into your Dooms and your Wolfensteins and then, you know, the stuff that we kind of, Love now. Whether Destiny, it's... that's one the kids play. Destiny's another one. <laughs> I've never yeah. played it. Destiny's another yeah. one. Yeah. They're just going to keep coming out, aren't they? It's going to be <laughs> yeah, like Tourette's. Like yeah. But yeah, it's, um, I, I quite like the genre. Again, Fallout, is that I'm not great at it. Yes. It was like a F- Fallout. I suppose, yeah, if you were that's kind of like RPG. it is because it's not, yeah, it's Fallout. Like, I suppose, like, because yeah. you could say cyberpunk as well, because that's yeah. F that the most of the gameplay mm. is first person shooting, yeah. but it's like an RPG as well. Right. Okay. So, so it's Fallout. Yeah. We could we could but keep yeah, going could all night, go, couldn't we? Like you said, have, you know, is it the, uh, next to like sports? I've games? I've is tried to exactly. Mm. I mean, I've yeah. tried to keep it as close to the the definition yeah. of the genre as possible. You could add all sorts in there because mm. there's tons of other games that straddle adventure FPS yeah. or yeah. whatever. I've mentioned a couple, but if I start going on about the yeah, rest, yeah. we'll be here all night. Mm. But yeah, yeah so I'm glad we got through that list. I'm glad we looked at the development of it, and I'm. Uh, interested to have learned very nice where it kind of came from where it went mm-hmm. to so thanks for your company chaps thank thanks you for listening well, everybody well and um i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you on the next one adios thanks for listening to today's podcast we really hope you enjoyed it you can tweet us at arcade attack uk we're also on facebook at facebook.com slash arcade attack uk check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots more retro gaming goodness and to delve into our archives our podcasts are also available on spotify stitcher podbean youtube and apple podcasts please leave us a review and a rating we'd really appreciate it if you'd like to support arcade attack please check out our patreon page at patreon.com slash arcade attack which will give you access to exclusive podcasts interviews and other bonus content so Until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon.